What up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Crown and Caliber. Listen, when you're buying a secondhand watch on the internet, there's the right way to do it, there's the wrong way to do it. I've been through both. <laughs> when I did it the wrong way, I bought it from a guy off a regular old auction site. It looked good in pictures, the price was decent, everything was cool. Turned out the movement was bunk and the thing was actually a fake and I lost all all my money. Then, other times, I bought from Crown & Caliber. Crown & Caliber is a legitimate business. They've been in business for years. They have a large team of watch technicians. They have thousands of watches in stock, and the photos you see on the internet are of the actual watch you're buying. When you buy a Crown & Caliber watch, you're buying a real watch. You're buying a watch that is as described, and you're buying a watch that works. And if it's an old watch, look, sometimes old watches, they stop working, right? But Crown & Caliber has a limited mechanical warranty, so that if you buy a watch from them, it's going to work, and it's going to keep working, even if it's a vintage watch. That's what I love about these guys. They also buy your old watches, or they'll trade for a watch of theirs. It's a very easy process, and if you have decided mentally that this watch has got to go, they can make it gone within like 24 hours, and you can be traded on to the next thing. It's great. The process is is seamless. It's really nice. Um, I've really appreciated them as a sponsor for the last you know, two and a half years now, uh, and we've got a special offer for you. Use code TST175 at checkout. TST175 gets you $175 off your first watch at crownandcaliber.com. That's TST175. Five at crowningcaliber.com. Even though I currently own pretty much every watch I want to own, I still find myself browsing their new arrivals section in case something comes up and tickles my fancy. Use code TST175 at crowningcaliber.com. We're also brought to you by autotempest.com. Listen, Time is money. I know that as well as anybody because my entire career is based on booking out my time and I have a very fixed amount of it. Now, maybe your career doesn't work like that, but your time is also valuable, especially if you have to do double work. Nobody wants to do double work. Double work sucks. Autotempest.com helps you search all the most popular, and some not even that popular, but all certainly all the most popular, and then some, car listing sites while only filling out that information, your search terms, one time. It doesn't, you don't have to retype it every single time. It searches all the top sites like cars.com, cars soup, cars direct, compares with eBay Motors, compares with all of Craigslist nationally, Facebook marketplaces in there, autotempest.com searches all these places with just one set of search terms. They bring it all home for you. You know what I'm saying? Autotempest.com, they're good people. They don't want your money. You don't have to buy anything. All they want is to save you time. They just make it easy. The thing you were doing anyway, they make it easier for you. Check them out, autotempest.com. We love them. All right, on this episode, uh, I have been hearing about this dude for quite some time, generally on the porch in Malibu with Spike and Paul and sometimes Jerry talking about old cars going... Uh, how are we going to find this car? Well, Serio is going to get it. Well, what are we going to do with this car? Well, Serio will get rid of it. Well, what do we do about this? Serio will help us out. And I'm always going, who is this Serio guy? Well, Serio is Steve Serio, and he is a car broker, flipper, sourcer, importer, exporter. He moves the good shit, folks. And I was not disappointed. He is incredibly interesting character as well. And this is the first of what will almost certainly be uh, many shows with uh, car broker Steve Serio on the Smoke and Tire podcast. What up, folks? Smoking Tire Podcast, back from a Tahitian hiatus. It's nice to see y'all again. And we've got, uh, we've got a gentleman in the studio who, let me just, let, uh, let's just, let's, I'll intro, I'll intro Steve in an interesting way, or in the only way I know how, which is that I frequent 
the porch at a place I call Bill's, the Malibu Kitchen in Malibu. You should go there and get his sandwiches. They're fucking good. I was there yesterday. Yeah, as, as you probably were there every day. <laughs> and, you know, I hang out with my friend Spike Ferriston and my friend Paul Zuckerman. Occasionally, uh, Jerry Seinfeld will pop in, which is an extremely surreal experience for me. Uh, when I found out Jerry knew my last name, I was like fucking shocked. Okay. But, but, but I, I, you know, and I listen to these conversations between these heavy hitter collectors and inevitably we're talking about some car and it's well Serio will get it or Serio's got it or Serio will get rid of it or let's call Serio and see if we can find it who the fuck is Serio Steve <laughs> Steve Serio is in studio welcome sir thank you very much who the I'm sorry about the, my <laughs> ghetto look water look at this man this you is, can tell I've been out of town this is of, not even jet blue I'm sorry the this fucking the, my water situation <laughs> oh I'm embarrassed um, well the porch the porch was active yesterday uh, Zuckerman Ferriston uh, Eli Kogan Seinfeld was not there he did not make the effort to come uh, west Eli's not doing a very good job of living in Arizona <laughs> <laughs> He had his girlfriend on his lap the whole time, I so love he was that. doing a fine job at the porch. I love Eli, uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, but 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 you're the guy who gets things or yeah, gets rid of job. things or makes sure things are what they should be. So, how do you become that guy? Thirty-three years of scratching the surface. So I started in November. Well, what did years one through five of that process look like? Well, one through five was easy. It was Aston Martin uh, centric. And it was, of all things, people were buying cars then because they wanted to drive cars. They wanted cool stuff to drive. They wanted something in their garage. It 30 was, years, we're talking mid 80s. I'm talking November 87 November. is when I started. And I was, I was a professional photographer. So I worked in television. I had my own photo studio. Uh, this was a side job to keep me in cars uh -huh. because my photo business kept me in a nice place to live, yeah. but I could not satisfy the car addiction. I started selling weed in college for the same exact reason. <laughs> <laughs> to keep you in the weed. Where are the edibles, dude? Yeah, no, it, and, and, and just yourself. like you, it escalates. <laughs> yeah, it, just, it, it was not, I tell people this all the time, it was never scripted. I never went, I never started to get in the car business. I didn't want to, I didn't work for anybody else in the car. The car business is a spiteful, yeah, awful, filled with degenerate, reprobate, shithead, fuckwad. You name the people, they're all in the car business because <laughs> everything funnels south. You know, yeah. I can do this because I don't need a license for it, man. I can tell people what they want to hear, take their money, and screw. That's the car business. But uh, I wanted to do it because I love cars. And it was it was that passion that drove me, uh, and it was it was noticing it was a, it's a goofy thing. I was taking vacations in Europe um, with friends in the summers, and I we'd all go you know we'd go to get the car magazines, go to every single car place we could in London, mm -hmm. and it was a simple thing where Aston Martins, if they were five thousand pounds in the UK, they were five thousand dollars in the United States, and I kept scratching scratching my head because at the time the pound was like two to one, and I thought wait a minute, all I have to do is buy these cars in the United States <laughs> and, and ship them to England and work on the arbitrage of the money, and that's how the business started. Did the did the left-hand drive, right-hand drive thing become an issue? They no, don't really care over there, do no, they? No, no, I was buying old right-hand drive cars oh. brought to the United States. Oh, and returning them. And returning them, them oh. giving them back to the, <laughs> sending them back to the fatherland. So we're talking about DB cars mostly? Yeah, yeah. DB okay. four, five, and sixes were my first And in the late start. 80s, these were drivers. These yeah. weren't huge money collectors, really, no, were they? No, you could you could have got into a car the first DB4 Vantage I bought was twenty two thousand dollars, and that was as in eighty seven or eighty seven, <laughs> and drove it back from Rick Mancuso's place in Chicago, um, and then bought another one for eight thousand uh, dollars. That's backwards. I bought the first one for eight thousand dollars, and the second one for twenty two thousand, and then kept it going. Yeah, and I was doing people's favors because all these folks went to the UK and went. Honey, we're on vacation. Why don't we buy this old car and bring it home? And then it would break down. And nobody would ever fix it. And it would leak oil everywhere. And I was I was cleaning garages all over the country. <laughs> were you Were you fixing them too? Uh, not originally. I was just putting them in containers. Uh -huh. Found a guy in London through a mutual friend that I could ship them to that had an Aston repair business. So that's the start of this. Yeah. Um, Where was that guy in America? 
The guy, the guy. Oh, the, I'm sorry, the uh, guy yeah. in England. Where were you shipping? Yeah, him to? he he was in uh, Battersea. Uh, it's interesting because he was right behind the power station, which is now a complete hip neighborhood. Huh. And he was, of course, he, it is. He was in a uh, you know railway arch, <laughs> as many of these guys are. Yeah. Now um, it's a high lofted. <laughs> now it's he, beautiful he, lofted vaulted ceilings. He, he got <laughs> kicked out of that area where he was for years. Only to go behind the Tate Modern when that oh. was all run down. Yeah. And then that became Hipster 101, and the boxing gym moved him next to him, and the CrossFit place got on the other side, and he was doomed. This is the, this is the Magnus Walker model in L.A. Yeah, exactly. Magnus bought every shithole in downtown, <laughs> and now they're all blue bottle coffees, you know, in studios. Right yeah, creep. I got a coffee there yesterday. Yeah, I you mean, know? his his plan it was successful. He yeah. don't have to do shit. He's chilling. It's it's one of those, you know, you can be dumb or lucky uh you know yeah. and just both i guess and but if, if you could you could have never have scripted what he did i could have never have scripted starting with a fax yeah. machine and a chair <laughs> and then having were you a dealer were you actually no. a dealer you're just a guy i was a guy then yeah and then i decided to become a dealer and rented a garage in cambridge um failed miserably at that because i didn't know how to run a business um did you try and have like a showroom like a proper dealership or was it just a physical place to warehouse these cars uh, the physical place with a couple of guys working, and then we started uh, the dealership when Lotus in 1991 came to me through another mutual friend in Florida, and they said, hey, we understand you're dealing these uh, English cars, you love them, you want to be a Lotus dealer? And I thought, well, hell, why not? Because the Elan had just Tell come me out. they were Elans. That's, were Elans. that's the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. We'd car. love to sell you <laughs> a Korean made. Was it Korean? No, or, no, no, that, that was, made, that was, was made legitimately in Ethel. But what was a Suzuki powered? It's like a Suzuki based is front Suzu. wheel. A Suzu, Suzu based. that's what it was. Oh my God, I'm going to get ringed over the calls uh, on the internet. But yeah, <laughs> the Elans. But yeah. That was a cool, you know, strangely enough, it was too much money because the Miata had just come yeah, out. The yeah. Metro had just yeah, come the out. Yeah, the Miata killed the Capri. Oh, it killed the, the Metro. The Capri and it was killed made the in Australia. Australia. Yeah. So it killed that. Um, and the, yeah, talk about bad timing. So the, the Miata came out at. Eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, and the Elan was forty. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so the numbers went right into the shitter. Right, but on the Lotus. other hand, you had the incredible product placement of the Esprit, and if looks could kill, with Richard Grieco. <laughs> 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 we were still pimping off of Pretty Woman and Basic Instinct. Oh, that, Pretty dude. Woman, Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. That was Richard Gere busting out, you know. You know that was good product yeah, placement, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, that was that. That was a product placement, right? Oh, it absolutely. Must have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Fucking so Julia Roberts must have sold more esprits from Pretty Woman, and they gave them two cars that were gray mm -hmm. that they couldn't sell. So they're gonna, <laughs> you're going to use these two gray cars that we can't hump anywhere in the country. I don't understand what was so, wrong with the gray cars that uh, everyone just wanted the BRG over tan or no, the what? yellow the, the, or what? the Jim Clark edition then too BRG with the yellow wheels oh, man yeah. the yellow interior right so that's so early 90s Oh. Like I had a Mercury Villager Nautica where they did that same. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Paint the wheels. You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about, right? Exactly. Look like a capsized sailboat. Yeah. yeah, they did the same thing over at Lotus. <laughs> so Lotus, they, they started that that tradition of uh, limited edition cars that many manufacturers, when they're trying to get rid of the end of a run for something, uh -huh. all of a sudden you see the limited editions come out. Yeah, Horatio but, Pagani's yeah. killing that game right now. <laughs> at a I'm higher sorry, margin. Did you say there's an SL70? <laughs> Three for sale somewhere? How much? Don't care. Flip it. <laughs> Move on to the next Indian. Come on, Bro, let's he's, got a, one. he's got a SL seventy three chop shop over there. <laughs> <laughs> Hacking them things up. New <laughs> Zonga Cinque 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 Cento. <laughs> Not the direction I thought we were going to go in, but this is good. But he's figured it out. Yeah. I mean, he's made his his niche. I mean, his right. micro niche. Yeah. Um, Wait. So, okay. So, so you're importing Lotus so, Salons now. So now I I took I, I mean, this crazy situation where the garage I failed at worked as a perfectly good place to service cars, but I had to get a downtown presence. So I had a downtown Boston showroom that was two cars in a window next to the Hancock Tower. How interesting. So is that, I, was I, that the better move? That was a good first start. I had 10 car parking in the building. So I had this great situation in the building that I was in, right in downtown Boston. And people, this, But this was the ball lake of the whole thing. It was in a, an office building. And people would come in, stand in the doorway, and go, what is it you do here? 
and I, they didn't I, understand. I, like I, these are for sale. These you are, can buy them. <laughs> you do that the first thousand times. Oh and then no! You, then you look and you go, um, "We sell fax machines in here. Well, I'm just renting the space to the guys <laughs> that want to keep cars here." And people, you don't have to be a smartass. You don't have to be a dumbass. What do yeah, you think yeah. you do here? Yeah. You know, we sell cars here. It's a big thing. Lotus Motorsports in the window, <laughs> and you know. So and then we expanded to the bay people, next to I us. I don't understand why some uh, real obvious things just don't sink right in over. the public. I, it's weird, Forget right? Forget about yeah, it, Yeah, it's man. weird. You, that happens in other stuff, too. Is, I'm with stupid t-shirt. Yeah. And we should be giving those away to a lot of people. I'm yeah. actually, at, they would just come in, and but they would stare. They'd just come in and they'd look and go, what is it? I don't understand why these cars are here. They're for sale. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And you wait so long odd. enough, you'll see us drive one out through the lobby of the building. That's so, so odd. That went, uh, that morphed into. Now I don't want to brag, Matt. I don't Did you choose see. Boston, by the way, or I grew up in Boston? You grew up in Boston. Yeah. Okay, so you were just doing it at home, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. After I morphed out of being a photographer into the car thing the whole time, there was never a plan. So. Lotus, I thought, this is a real legitimate, this is a business, because the Esprit was still a hot thing. Mm -hmm. So I was, the Lotus, I was the biggest Lotus dealer in the country from, I want to get this right, 93, 4, 5, and 7. How many cars a year or a month would, does it take to be the biggest Lotus one, dealer in the country? One a month. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's phenomenal. <laughs> I still have the little plaques. <laughs> I'd go to the ceremony at the Detroit Auto Show, and the, you know, here's your plaque again. You here's get a plaque this. for every car you sell. <laughs> So I still have them. That's awesome. Uh, and then while I was uh, a Lotus dealer, I was begging to become an Aston Martin dealer. And at the time, there were no Aston Martins to sell. That's when they hit the absolute this bottom. Even before Ford got involved. Right before, right? Ford was involved, but they weren't building any cars yet. They were just giving them Taurus steering wheels yeah, yeah, with yeah. airbags in them? <laughs> in, the, in, in those V600 cars. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah. those handmade, wonderful things. Have that you we driven a getting. V600? Oh, yeah. Is it good? Um, it was good then. <laughs> it was, you know, it's like the uh, Le Mans car. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, you know, that is, they made 40 of them. It goes like stink. Uh, your Vanquish is far more technologically advanced and much more forgiving to drive and easier to drive quickly. So there's, those cars are great brutish cars, but they were the, the, um, the bridge between the old V8s from the 80s and what became proper production cars for Ford to make money with. For those who don't so, know what we're talking about, the Aston Martin V600 oh, there Le Mans. Wow. There you go, that's it. Can you can you just give us the rundown on what this silly thing was? <laughs> yeah, twin turbo uh, twin 600. supercharged, oh, so I'm, I'm sorry, you. Uh, you may. Um, well, they weren't sold in the United States and the one I brought in Almost got federalized, and then the feds were like, yeah, you cannot clean this car. They all have to go. So when I see one for sale- I'm sorry, sir. There's hey, literally nothing you can do you just to see, make You this cannot. Happen. So these things, that now are, they're approaching 25 years old. You can get them in. Um, but yeah, it, it was brutish. It's uh, it, it, That defined Aston from the period, and yeah. that's when they were still making things by hand and no two were alike. It's so, so funny that there's- they're so crazy looking in person. Yeah. I mean, they they really are aggressive, and and there's a lot of '90s in this car. Oh well, but you open the hood, and holy shit, is that an engine? Wait, yeah. let me get the let me get the engine shot because that's really where it's at. Well, the head fake is the Virage, though. See, the head the head fake is we got the Virage. The rest of the world got that. There you go, bro. I mean, that's that's just if you are monster on the video yeah, <laughs> version of the podcast yeah. right now. What we're describing is an engine bay. That has the the blower that you'd normally see on like a Terminator Cobra. <laughs> it has one on each cylinder. It's yeah. one on each side of the engine bay. Somebody in a meeting said, yeah. "Guys, I have the plan. We got to do this. We got to do <laughs> and this. We, and, we're and, gonna. And, and we're going to make it. Uh, you know, we're going to tie in back to 1959 with the Le Mans history. I mean, that was the greatest coup with Shelby Moss and Salvadori winning that race. Yeah, because they they're still. They're they're still working off that victory, you know. I mean, that was that was <laughs> a year before and I was born. Martin are still working <laughs> off their fifties race wins. I just watched on the flight home Ford versus Ferrari again uh, last night, and they 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 opened the movie with that scene. The DBR one, yeah, with, with Shelby popping the pills and trying to stay <laughs> stay alive, you know, try, trying to focus. They really um, made that pill popping pretty casual in that film. Don't you know, they? it's just going to keep my heart going by having a few more of these checklists. No you know, problem. Little, so let's let, let's dump these in. So um, so you I wanted to franchise for this car. Of I wanted a franchise in 19... I started knocking on the door in 1991 when I became a Lotus dealer and at the, I remember 
the first meeting I went to Aston, uh, Peter Lovanos, who was still a principal oh, yeah. in the company, um, I was supposed to meet with Peter, and I don't know if Walter Hayes was there still or yet, um, but Lovanos had to run out, literally, in front of me because um, war was starting and the, there was some uneasiness in the Gulf then. And one of his, I remember him saying, what do you mean one of my ships got hit by a Stinger missile? <laughs> and it was like, so he looked at me and was like, you know, I know you're here to meet me. You got to come back. Yeah. So that was the slow drag from 1991 to 1996 um, when Aston was next to Lotus at the Detroit Auto Show. And the national sales manager, Jackson Pike at Lotus, who is a, a peach mental case, f- most fun guy to ever work with, um, he said, there's some guys here from Aston Martin that are where they're expanding the dealer network from seven to 19 dealers. And they said, can you help us? Is that US or global? US. US, okay. So yeah. there were only seven dealers in the US um, before the DB7 came out and that were left standing. And they said, we want to expand. These are the open markets. There's 12 open markets. Do you know people in these markets? And Bill Donnelly at the time, who was working for Aston Martin, met with Jackson and said, do you know anybody in Boston? And Jackson goes, well, our biggest dealer in the country is in Boston, and he loves British cars. And then sort of Bill went, oh, wait a minute. Do you know this guy that's been trying to be a dealer for five or six years? <laughs> Jackson picked up the phone. He goes, come out to Detroit yeah. a day early before I was getting my award. And he said, I want you to sit down with Bill. And we mapped out this whole thing, handshake. Uh, so that was December going into January. And by the end of January, um, Michael Hazy had come out from Aston Martin to visit my, my shop. And it was, yeah, we want you to be the guy in Boston. It was a total handshake over a napkin. And wow. it's how you could do it. You could never do that today. You could never, ever do that. And we they started sending if, me you cars. You could for like Teslas. You can buy 100 Teslas uh, on a handshake uh, right uh, now. Yeah. Well, I mean, becoming a dealer for, yeah, you, no. you know, you, you Well, could. there was this sort of transitionary period in the 80s where it went from gray market to factory de- legit. Or, or legit dealers, yeah. right? That's sort of like 88 to 92 period, yeah. right? Yep. Because like I remember when I was a little kid, you know, going to, and you probably remember this name, uh, Formula One Imports in Atlanta. Of course. Do you remember them? Sure. Back cover, yeah, yeah, DuPont yeah, yeah, Registry yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to make my mom yeah. take me there when I was like eight. <laughs> and the guy who owned it, I mean, who, I can't remember the name of the guy. You probably wouldn't know the guy. <laughs> but uh, used to let me sit in all the cars, but it was like this total gray market Lamborghini we, Ferrari importer. We had a place in, in Bridgewater where Spike grew up uh-huh. uh, by the name of Tech Auto and Tech was the right. same way. I remember and, them too, yeah. And, and they would have the craziest stuff there and all of it was, you know, it was all kind of a wink and a nod that, yeah, yeah we can sell you that as long as you don't tell anybody that you bought it here. You know, kind of, you know, so, <laughs> yeah, totally. um, they were great guys. But by the time you were getting into it, it was much more of a straightforward friend oh. like it is now. Oh, sure it is. Right, yeah. okay. I mean, we had you know, corporate identity and we had all of that and we had to stock a, a certain number of cars we had to make sure we had a DB7 demo. Right. Um, my first DB7 demo, I got caught in a snowstorm and took the car off the road a couple of times. Thankfully, didn't hit anything. Oh, man. Um, that was fun. Deflated the tires down to about eight pounds to get back to Boston. Um, <laughs> not yeah. a good snow car? <laughs> no, uh, not a, yeah, we didn't have winter package tires yet. I wonder. I, so, I bet if you put snow tires on it, it could, it could be fine. decent, actually. Yeah. 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 It's fine. We, we have you driven a, a DB7 recently? What was the last one you drove? Oh, uh, like within four or five years, maybe. Oh God, no! We get them in, in for service all the time. Do you, are they so, nice to drive still? I like the six-cylinder Jag-based original. The DB7. supercharged six. Yeah, if, you got to go with the Harry Winston edition yeah. with the, the, the ashtray and the <laughs> cigar Dunhill. cutter. Oh, the Dunhill! Dunhill. Shit, I Dunhill edition. stepped on the fucking Nin- joke. 1998. <laughs> we had we had a we had a, an event at the Dunhill store in Boston. Those uh, were the good wheels. That's well, how you were. get the really good wheels. You get on the that wheels, car. Yes. the luggage, the 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 lighter. The, the we had a cigar cutter in it. It was a cool pack. I think I it even came with up. a humidor. It, must, so, it did. Oh, you know, look. The, yeah, here's the a silver. They're also <laughs> yeah, oh, they're all so, silver. Dude, here's the craziest part. The wheels of look a lot like the V six hundred wheels. I think that's maybe why I like them. So we were talking about this the other night. I had a client by the name of Faisal Al Saad. Okay, I'm going to make the. This could be a two hour story. I'm going to make it thirty seconds. Faisal had one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw Faisal for the last time on September 10th, 01, when he packed up his shit and got out of the country because he got a call. His manservant came by and said, he's gone. Here's the car. Can you help sell it? And it was one of those shady gone. He said he literally picked up the phone, said hello to somebody, put it down 
packed as fast as he could and went to the airport. Was, didn't we get a story back then about some Saudis that were notified of something and well, got that, the fuck out of Dodge? He there was, was one something of them. about that. He yeah, was studying yeah, yeah. at Harvard at the time, and he was mm-hmm. a grad student. But he, you know, he had a butler and he had a, you know, a guy doing this, yeah. and a guy doing. He was a really great guy, but he yeah. was one of those. Hey, take a nod. You know, uh, Faisal, time when, to go. When the shit hits the, the fan, fan yeah. you wonder which side these guys are on. So yeah. anyway, but uh, anyway, that, so, Alfred, <laughs> Alfred Dunhill edition. I, I mean, if I ever, Matt, if I ever write a book, um, it's going to be called From uh, Rock Stars to Murder scenarios because oh, I've met all of these crazy people. So there's a Dunhill wait, car with the dark wait, wheels. Which that's one? It. Oh, the, the, you that's want the, the body kit, but you want this is the that's one the I Dunhill remember. Car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I had the wrong picture up because you, I was like, those wheels aren't the right wheel. The, these, these are the smoked, right wheels. Those smoked wheels. That's a cool car to drive, but they only brought between, see, we only had 97, 98 uh, were the only years uh, six-cylinder DB7 uh, was brought into the United States. All that was built in 95 in the UK, and you really don't want one of those cars. They're all rolling prototypes. And they built them for a year after, in 99, transitioning into the Vantage, the, uh, that car with 12-cylinder engine, essentially. So those cars, I, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but I think there are only 43 manual coupes between the two I years in the country. I wouldn't be surprised if it, was that low, if it was that low, yeah. So if you can find one that wasn't parked outside yeah. and the leather didn't shrink to death, everywhere on it on the dash and on the rear panel uh-huh. and all of that those are cool because big bang for the buck can and you total an aston with an interior problem i bet oh, you could sure you could <laughs> I mean, oh I yeah you, you could, could. dry <laughs> leather yeah. the leather the leather is as hard as this thing i bet you, i, I bet you definitely of, could yeah these are pretty that. they've aged well it's, it's not your, a bad looking car it's ian callum's best thing it was his moment along yeah. with the vanquish vanquish maybe yeah i think i'm i'm, I'm gonna defend the vanquish but i have a, but, i have a stake in the game oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Uh, I did a lot. Of, I mean, we sold. We were. I mean, it, times have changed dramatically. But when there were nineteen dealers, we were always in the top five, mm-hmm. and Boston always took the big, expensive cars. Everybody wanted a Vanquish. Mm. Um, I sold out of the ninety-nine uh, DBAR ones that were made for the oh, world. The we DBAR one. What a crazy 12. car! Really, we did twelve of those. That's cars. a bunch. Yeah, yeah. So this was a this was a big time controversial car. This thing was funky looking. Do you? Th- I, I I don't know fucking if, looking because they never made a roof for it. I don't know if time has been kind to this one. I don't think it really sits on the wheels properly. I, I don't know. But Yet, you, your the, complaint isn't the size of the grill. It's the wheels. I just think you the think fit, it arches no, the up grill, in the back too much. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's worked. Honestly. I have a dear really friend. You're worked. essentially showing me his car, and he's still the original owner of the car. He's 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 had that car since new. He you know, Zagato. When Zagato nails it, they nail it, but I don't really think they nailed this one. Well, I'm going to put my, my head on the chopping block for a second, and we won't, we'll get back to the timeline. So what do you think of the new Zagato shooting break? The uh, Vanquish uh, the, shooting the, break. The DBS one? Yeah, the uh, Vanquish one. I think it's pretty cool. I think, know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of it in general. This guy right here? Yeah. I mean, I think this is a lovely thing. I'm a, I'm a shooting brake fan in general. Yep. The DB6 shooting brake is like my favorite of all time. Yep. Um, AI Design had one of them they were working on, and ooh, it was the, the was blue it one. Was a panel craft one or a, a Radford one? Do you know? Don't know. Uh, didn't ask. It was blue. The Radford ones had the proper windows in the back that curved down at the back of the car, and the panel craft ones had the windows that went up in the back, so they were a little dainty no, looking. No, this one was daintier and went up in the back. Yeah. It wasn't as aggressive. But I, I mean, I've seen one of these Zagato shooting brakes in person, and it looks amazing. So that's my daily ride now. Fuck out of here. Yeah, it is. So <laughs> I, that's, you rule, Steve. I, 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 so there are 11 of them in the country, and I took one on New Year's Eve. I cut a deal with Aston to take one because they were, you know, end of the year, let's, let's move some stuff. And I thought, even with so few of these, there's deals to be made and moving stuff like that. Uh, it was good. I mean, it was the end of the year. It was a year old at this point, and they use it for some promotion. And oh, I thought okay. I, they they called and said, "Do you know somebody that would want this car? Because we've got one left." And I went, "Yeah, send it to me." It was the first time, Matt, since your vanquish, where I looked at a car, and every day in the shop for the two weeks it was in there, I kept looking at it, going, "And it's all black," yeah. which is the other thing. So it looks like the Batmobile. Let's get a let's get a black one. The and photos. it is. It's the most useless <laughs> thing in terms of how it was designed inside because it's a two pit cock, a two person cockpit with this area in the back where you can't put anything back there. It's all going to go flying around and hit you in the head. <laughs> so I, t- I, I took it home and I, I had to get the wife test and the kid test is a bigger one because my kids don't like cars really. And my son Enzo said, who's not 
I didn't name Your him either. Your son's name is Enzo? And my wife named him. <laughs> so hey, she had no idea uh, Ferrari's name was Enzo. Get the fuck out no of here. Clue. You accidentally ended up with a Ac- son named Enzo? Rocco and, en- Rocco and Enzo. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. And Jack. So, um, well, it looks good in black, doesn't yeah, it? It's I, Every time I go out in it, somebody's got the old, you're not James Bond, you're Batman. I mean, and I it mean, is- I mean, that's a good looking car. It is so much fun to drive. And that's the NA V12, right? That's a Vanquish, yeah. not a not a DBS. Yeah, so the that's NA, good. Yeah. you know, I, I had the DBS uh, a couple weeks ago. I mean, and it's batshit fat from- 80 to 150 is like are you, well that's only 590 horsepower versus the 715 no, i so don't need it though i, I don't I need it i like the na so here's the thing i was going to get rid of a porsche speedster to make room in the garage for this new or old oh, 56 okay old. i've owned the car since 1996 and i thought okay i have two speedsters i'll sell one couldn't part with the speedster after i agreed to sell it to a very dear client and what's going to go instead I have an 85 Vantage, uh, proper Ooh. Euro Coupe. Ooh. That's going, and my 911R is going to go because this is more fun to drive than the R. Really? Yeah. Than the than the 911R? Yeah. I I hear I, everyone who drives 911Rs. I, I love it. And, you know, say it's the, it's just the the best of everything. But what got me here with you was the Sport Classic. Oh. So I'm going to keep the Sport Classic. Not as fast. Not as the, it's not as technologically wonderful as the R. They are cool though. And I'm going to keep that. And I have a GTS Targa that I drive. So really? it's so I'm. Something 911 heavy. You're you're, flo- you're um, flowing always, right? Yeah. So let's talk about that's that. Crazy. Uh, the D- that vanquishes the shit. I'm yeah. about that 100. <laughs> percent Good. Um, I've been getting Magnus busted my nuts all weekend about it. I can't why? Because uh, he could. Oh. Because <laughs> he likes breaking my Get nuts on the board shooting break. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, do they call it? Do they? they does Aston officially spell it B R A K E now? Have yes. They, they've abandoned the correct B R E A K. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'll we should do? do? Let's, let's take that you. thing out in the field and load it up with shotguns. Let's <laughs> use it what it's meant for. They have a shotgun for. case as an option. Oh, they do? They do, yeah. So, okay, so they, it's really a problem with the spelling more so than the function. They've gotten the shooting break function in there. Yeah. But they just spell it wrong because the rest of us are stupid. And like, these fucking yanks. Yeah. <laughs> these yanks. <laughs> what do they know? What Man. do they know from break and break? I mean, look, I did the manual <laughs> conversion in my car. and Oh, in, you did? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Well, At see, works. It's a game changer. You did it? You sent it there? I sent it? it there. Oh, come on. You so know what, you know what my car, car is. Is it an 04 or 05? No, mine's an 03. Okay. And it was Ralph Lauren's car. It was sold new to Ralph, mm. and it was sold through from Cindy, Cindy and Miller. Yeah, sure. And it was special ordered with a purple label leather and suede interior. They sent the swatch over there. So it's got all oh, Ralph I had no Lauren idea. shit on it. I had no idea. I got it from him in 05. Five six maybe end of five. You've had that car that long. Yeah, I got it with oh, thirty two hundred miles on it. That's a commitment. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's and we've had it. We've had it, and then I I sent it to England in twenty thirteen to be converted to a stick. When I heard you could do that, you still it could took then. a year. Yeah. They won't do anymore. No, I think they brought it. I think they're out of parts for doing it. Dude, <laughs> oh, I yes! do not think they can do them anymore. <laughs> you know, here's the price on mine. No, yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, it's a, it was a total game changer. It removes the car from the aging curve instantly. It it's in it's silly to say, and you you can't explain this unless you've got the cars with the paddles and with the stick next to each other yeah they don't even feel like the same it's, car you're not driving the same car no. anymore no it's, it's not it's and so much fun now and it's, and it's the same car yeah <laughs> but it, but the, the brakes feel different the suspension feels yeah. different the turn-in feels different yeah it's everything it, about it is better right and it's and, and i it was expensive and they and was it 40 grand then? yeah basically okay and they treated me like they were doing me a massive favor the entire time not like i was giving them an extraordinary amount of money for some super special thing work service is very special but yeah game over yeah. with the car and I'm, it's a keeper now now it's just a straight it's a straight keeper for long haul so i didn't realize you've had it that long so yeah. how many miles are on it now Eleven thousand nine hundred. So you don't let it sit for very long. I dr- it's here. It's up the road. Okay. I drive it every couple of weeks. Okay, so because that's the kiss of death with those cars sitting. Oh with yeah, with the fuel pumps, mm-hmm. the the plugs and coils, yeah. the whole the all of that. No, it's good stuff mechanically. Yeah. It works good. It. Yeah, yeah, it works good. And at forty thousand miles, it'll be broken in. So think about what you have to look <laughs> I should, forward to. I, sh- I really yeah. should drive it more than I do, but I drive you, it as much as I have time. You for drive it. it more than the Lambo. Nope. Oh, you don't. I put 6,000 kilometers on the Lambo in the last year. 
you find the Lambo more usable out here, you must pick your spots perfectly I, yeah, to take pick, that car I pick out. my spots. I have to take my shoes off to drive boat. <laughs> <laughs> so if I got to make the sacrifice, the Lambos. In my, I drive the Lambo more because I keep it at my house. Right. That's why. The other one is at the other building. Okay. Uh, let's talk about you. They hear right. enough about my fucking cars. Um, <laughs> I like to hear about those people's cars. We can talk about my yeah. cars off off mic, but yeah. I want to hear about your shit. So, okay. So, I, I don't know you necessarily from being a dealer as much as a guy who finds the super special, right? So, let's talk yeah. about car collecting. I'm not the dealer. I have right. a great staff. So I have essentially 15 guys in my building. Uh, my GM, Pat Roussel, has been with me for a 1,000 years. He, he left for a little while. He came back. Uh, I've got a great service manager. I've got great techs. But I don't, I don't spend a lot of time on the day-to-day -day on the new car stuff because those guys do it. Right. And I have failed miserably with Celine, Spiker, Vespa. <laughs> you name it. I gave it a shot. Okay. And then all you that You really went like for some underdogs, didn't you? EB110 Bugatti, I was one of the dealers. <laughs> and that whole thing fell apart right after we threw the party. Does it drive so, you nuts to see Spikers going for 250 grand on Bring a Trailer now? Or did you see that coming? No, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see we, that coming we either. We couldn't sell them at 300. I didn't sell Galpin one. Galpin was giving um, them away right and i i victor mueller who ran that company would not listen to the making the cars for less money and now they're kind of like celine's yeah a like and the or, s7s or, or or um uh what's not not celine the guy moslers no jerry wiegert oh uh, the, the vectors, vectors. <laughs> <laughs> people paying money for vectors vectors are in peak ironic cool right now oh come on it's the cycle it's uh, cool and then enthusiast cool then not cool uh, and then ironic uh, cool and then back to actually cool that's your cycle vectors so you are stay cool. ironic cool you if you get in that cycle you stay cool yeah all right <laughs> i don't get vectors either but i think it's just nostalgia maybe yeah. i don't know yeah, oh, yeah, it's, uh, too much money. I don't know what it is. They're um, shit piles. <laughs> Five hundred thousand. Didn't even get the logo right. I mean, nothing about that car is right. It doesn't look. None of it. You never look at that car and go, "What an elegant thing." Oh, I, really, you don't subtle you way don't, to get around. You don't think a twin turbo Toronado drivetrain is exotic, <laughs> bro? Um, so anyway, so uh, yeah. Thankfully, I've had a great staff, and I have to give them all the credit for doing. And, and keeping customers happy because I'm not a people person. I, I the, the, the you know people don't come to complain to me because I have that Bostonian. Yeah, yeah. If you, really, <laughs> you you want what for yeah. what and get get out. I mean, I've fired five billionaires, and and I've counted as and, clients as clients. I just said can't do it. Yeah. I can't, you you are you're too fucking needy. <laughs> you too, and you can't talk to me like I'm um some oh, piece of shit yeah. dog. And you can't kick my guys. And you can't complain when everybody's busting their ass for you and you just can't so they're all they all have that commonality of so much money and then some of the guys who have that kind of money are the, are the greatest guys in the world mm. so the, and and it's the minority that need to be shown the door yeah but i've been yeah i fell into this thing chasing very very rare cars uh, uh after i almost went bankrupt in oh nine in august of oh nine when everything changed i sort of thought to myself i have a rolodex of guys and I know who to sell cars to. I've been only focused on, you know, Astons and Porsches. And by by a dumb luck meeting at Amelia Island with two of my closest friends now, and they were close friends then, but a, a fellow from the UK came up to me and he said, um, I, this is, after, we, I, after I did the old, what are you doing here? Why are you here today? Well, I drove down from New York with a friend of mine, I went to go see a client. And keep in the back of your mind, um, I've got a 375 single seat Ferrari for sale. It's like, okay, all right, I'll keep it in the back of my mind. I made like this many of them, and yeah. just a friend just just saying, hey, you know, if you hear of a if you hear of a thing, here's the thing. Literally, Matt. Yeah. Six minutes later, my other buddy comes to me who was curating a collection in the D.C. area, and we put together like over a hundred cars for this one guy, and he said. Uh, you're not going to believe what so and so wants, and I can't say so and so's name. And he goes, "What is it?" He goes, "He wants a single seat Ferrari race car." And I'm thinking, my immediate reaction was, "I okay, you guys, is the, the jokes, someone, the jokes over? Yeah, like I've yeah. lost a lot of money in the last year. I'm I'm like I could barely afford to fly down here." Um, I said, Hold on a second, Andrew talked to Chuck. Chuck talked to Andrew. What did you just say to me? And what did you just say to me? And that started the pendulum going back. 
in a completely different direction. I mean, save the business. Yeah, yeah. But then we, then I started getting into. I thought uh, you go, hey, if I have clients that are above recessions, right. <laughs> if they, if I only find the very, very the best, best for these people right. that can, you know, that don't even worry about recessions. These are the things I got to go gunning for. And with that particular car, it was utterly legit. And there's a few cars that I've had like this. We'll go. I'll go back to my my friend Jerry, and I'll tell you a very anecdote with a with a 550A Spider that he bought for me. Um, but with this car, it was a super rare car that failed to qualify at Indianapolis. So when the car was restored and they took the whole thing down, they discovered all the other serial numbers on it, and it was Froilan <laughs> Gonzalez's car that he won the championship in in 49 or 50 or whatever it was. So it was a great car. Right. And I just tapped into. I know all the guys especially in Europe, that know where all the dead bodies are. And I know all of the people in the United States that are looking for the dead bodies, so why am I just focused in this narrow little part of the marketplace, and I, I've gone out since, and mm. pick something. I mean, if you said to me, can you find a McLaren F1 long tail? Can you find a, a Series 1 GTO? Can you find, if in a course of an afternoon, I can make calls and say, what's on the market, where is it, mm. and how much is it, and can we get somebody one? You know, SSK, Mercedes-Benz, pick some weird thing, yeah, yeah. and it comes up. And you know, I, it, it, I went to a dinner in uh, London uh, that I go to, or a luncheon in London, a Christmas party, where all the, all the guys from the business get together, and it's grown to like 40 people in a room, and it's this raucous, crazy thing. And a buddy of mine uh, turned to me and he said, can you do anything with this? And he shows me his phone and it's a 550A Spider. And I kind of went, oh, maybe. Long story short, it happened to be in Germany, miles. I was going to Germany the next day with Cam Ingram. It happened to be right around the corner from where we were going to look at a 959S. And he said, let's go look at this. You know it's never gonna work out. It's gonna be some piece of shit thing. It's gonna be fucked up and crashed and rebodied and reframed. and." We found a, a, a 1958-59 Le Mans winning car that had been, not winning, Le Mans entered car, um, finished, I'm going to forget it wrong, but like 10th in uh -huh. 58, DNF'd in 59, and it was in exactly the same condition it was in 1959, and it had been missing for 40 years so in this garage you, so in who, Germany. So who finds it? Where does it, why does it, why did it, if it's been missing for 40 years, right? why do you get this? the call? The best German broker, the oldest guy in the business in Germany, contacted my buddy, who he does a lot of pre-war stuff with, mm -hmm. and said, in case you know somebody, he goes, well, send it to me, because a friend of mine's coming in town that deals with a lot of Porsches. I'll show it to him. So, and so it just worked out. It, but that's how that stuff happens. Yeah. You could you could have looked for that car for a decade and never found it. Okay, in let's go let's take a, a side step because that's cool. Like that's yeah. like the that's the the Indiana Jones shit, yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah. the un unearthing history. Like that's at the very very top of sure. the seven figure car market, right? Yep. Let's bring it back down to earth for a second. Yeah. A little bit. For me I, I don't. I don't have that much money. My Countach was a big stretch. Oh, for me. I mean, by all shooting break is by all a accounts, massive stretch yeah, yeah. for me. So, but, but if you have, can, can you play in the car investing game and succeed on a reasonable budget? No. Okay. You uh, can. Uh, first of all, you use the word investing. Okay. And why I, is that wrong? Because it's not. It's playing. It's playing. It's exclusively playing. The only time it became investing, there was a run up from 1991. All the way through, you can pick the time, whether it was August of 14 or January of 15, where cars kept quietly going up in value mm -hmm. because more people got involved, people were spending money, boomers, wherever it was, yeah. guys were borrowing money against their houses, whatever it was, or guys sold their businesses. What fucked it up completely, February of 2012, the Financial Times in London does a story about investments. And they tracked 10 different things, gold, art, watches, real estate all over the world, different places, and, and classic cars. cars. Uh -huh. Classic cars were second on the list to gold. <laughs> and then about six months so later- everybody dives in. Everybody do dove in and it became investment. Mm -hmm. And it never, be when you asked me when you first started, I was finding cars for people who wanted old cars, cool cars, a weekend ride, and that's what got me into the business. Then all of a sudden, I'm now a broker who has to give advice to people calling saying, I have five or $10 million to Instead spend. Instead of being a car expert, you're now a financial expert, for, and you don't really wanna be. What can I park my money in where next mm. year it's gonna be worth more? And that was a slippery slope to get into from, again, about 12 
through the end of 14. You know the old joke about when, you're, when your postman starts giving you advice about what stock to buy, that's yeah. time to get out? <laughs> okay, so that was the same thing. Every dentist knew about which car to buy. Every yeah. postman knew. Every guy knew, if you put your money here and you spend 100 grand on this, I bet you in yeah. two months you can get 110 for it or you can get 150 for it. You know, when I was and a then, kid, I made a list because I wanted my dad to buy cars. When yeah. he, my, my dad is quite wealthy now, but he wasn't when I was born. He, he mm. made all of his money in starting about when I was 14 or 15 until I was about 30. Yep. And so right when he first started making making money I was let's call it 93 94 I made a list of like 10 cars like here's the car and it was like you know was he a car guy at all not really I my mean, dad was not on any level he, my dad had a couple of kind of cool cars like he bought a Saab Turbo which mm-hmm. which, which that's quirky and, which knew you know yeah. that, it was not a normal thing he bought a first year LS 400 which was so he was casually but but I made a list and it was like F40 you know F50 and there's some other so a lot of early 90s stuff Countach and and if he had bought all of those cars at that time, he would oh, have done very well. Matt, but I, I don't think he would have beat the stock market, though. I, I don't had, think he would have. I had this conversation with Magnus yesterday, and we were talking about. I had asked him about real estate in downtown LA and how much, how many things he had passed on or whatever. And mm-hmm. this is the rabbit hole I was going down. And I, and then it turned, I, I turned it around on me, and I said, if I could have only have kept five or six not even, four of the cars that I was trading in regularly to keep the business going. I mean, I had the Allen Man GT40. Yeah. For, it was less than a million dollars. I had so many Lusos with original miles on them for a hundred grand. Like uh, if yeah. you had just sat on those four or five for 20 years, I instead of doing the constant flip, that would have just been it. It would have been a crazy amount of money. It's I, the 80-10 rule, right? It, where, where, or whatever, 80-20. Excuse yeah. me, my math. Yeah, 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 <laughs> this yeah. is why I do what I well, do. You're on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I had the very first Cobra that won anything for Shelby. <sighs> I mean, it was uh, CSX, I forget, the twenty. 14 or 20 I forget the number exactly but it was the very first car as a 260 to win anything then it was converted to a 289 it was the first 289 to have won anything I mean I had all those great yeah, cars yeah. the f- I- Again, we uh, had Bruce Meyer in here who oh. talks, who tells, you know, just stories of daily in cars with Lamar provenance and all kind of shit, you know, but he, cause he mm. loved, he never really cared about the money either. He just yeah. loved the cars. I said Nick Mason spending 50 yeah. grand at the time when everybody said he was nuts buying his GTO. What do you Did he spend 50 G's on a yeah. GTO yeah. in, in what year was that? 50, 70s. Wow. So it was a lot of money. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> and, for and he kept it. That's probably worth, that he, he probably made more money on that investment than all his years of touring. <laughs> Probably, uh, Anthony Bamford, and I don't. I, I th- oh yeah, I think this is a pretty well known story. His of the Bamford Bamford of uh, of the watch modification Bamford. That's the dad. That's the George the, Bamford. Right? Yeah, it's his dad. Okay, okay, yeah. So, um, two heart crushing stories uh, in my career that I have no control over either of them. Um, tried to sell his pair of GTOs in 2014 for a split second. He wanted to sell the GTOs. His cost basis in both those cars is seventy five hundred dollars. <laughs> in two GTOs, <laughs> Series One car and Series Two car, wow. and I bought him what early seventies or something. Oh, sixties. Wow. So he traded one of the James Bond DB fives that he bought from Aston Martin to do them a favor. He bought both of them when they were decommissioned from Goldfinger. He hated them, and he traded one for a GTO, and he got the other straight up, straight up even. That's an awesome buy. <laughs> that's an awesome trade. <laughs> and the other one, I he, love a DB5, but that's an awesome trade. That was twenty six hundred bucks. Wow. And the other five grand, I'm ninety nine percent sure it was Alan Decadne who sold him a car for five grand because <laughs> Alan's owned more GTOs than anybody. Has he? he he's tra- he's traded in more of those than in, in anyone. I if didn't you go know into that the about GTO Alan. book and you keep running across his name, own this, own that, own this, own that. Ralph's car, um, his GTO, Alan owned. It was stolen from Alan's mother's garage up in Laurel Canyon and went to Hawaii and the guy who stole it from Alan ended up selling it to Ralph. I mean, years no later. No way. That's a short, that's the short version of a wow, very funny whole, story that he could tell you. Thing, yeah. But, so there's that, but I, so two GTOs, he wanted $90 million for the pair. Okay? Yeah. And now one is 65, the other one's 45 or uh-huh. 50, depending on who you ask. I had a client at 80 and we thought, for okay, the pair, 80 for the, for the pair. pair. Uh-huh. Yeah. We thought, you guys, will, Anthony will, will, come down a little and my guy coming in will come up a little and it was through my uh, dear friend Alex Finnegan at Paul Russell and Company I got to give Alex a shout out for that because it was it was really his client but I was the conduit to the cars um, it didn't move Anthony said it's 90 went back to my guy and he goes I got 80 well you got 90 as well do you want the cars yeah and so that's the crushing it didn't happen story mm-hmm. the other 
That's not that crushing. Well, it's not that crushing. It's not that crushing. I, that, I was expecting truly crushing. That's not that bad. I was expecting him to lose $90 million <laughs> somewhere <laughs> and blame you for it. That's no, not, no, a, no, a, no, a no, no. A no sale is yeah. the worst crushing. Yeah. That's a that's the that's the pinnacle of your defeat. You're doing well, okay, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah. It's, it's it's a that's a uh, improper bitch. Um, but the funnier story is I sold Jerry a uh, chassis number 136 Spider, mm -hmm. And he had come up to my shop to drive a 356 C2 Coupe. Um, while he's there, this was not scripted. It was not anything theatrical. This 550A that, again, Finnegan had found comes rolling into my shop that we co-owned. So it's derelict. It's And that derelict's a little harsh, but it's been sitting a long time. The engine was in bits and pieces. And... 72 hours later, Jerry calls me and he goes, I'll take it. I'll take that too. No. And I'm like, I said, great. I said, uh, where do I send the bill? Because you don't know what I just said. I'll take it to. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I'm talking about the spider. I don't want the C2 coupe. And I'm like, we didn't talk about the price of the spider. And he goes, we didn't talk about it at all. He goes, I know, but I want that car. It got reaction from him. Mm -hmm. so it turns out we had a hunch that it was the missing uh, Sebring car. Okay. We go through the records. It's probably the missing Sebring car. Well, fast forward. It was the first uh, RSK engine car. It was a works car. Moss had driven it in Cuba and Argentina. It, and he just sent me something the other day that said, oh, I also found this out about the car. This happened. It ran here, here, and here as well. It's one of the most sought after, you know, best race history 550s. And in 2008, you couldn't access that information. You know, you kind of mm -hmm. had a hunch. But, you know, so stuff like that happens. That well, was a good he, investment. Well, how much hunch did he pay for is the question. Oh, I can't. Did he pay for a I would be indelicate to tell that. Did he yeah. pay for a little hunch or a lot of hunch? He paid fair hunch at Medium the time. Medium hunch? He paid, he paid, no, he paid, he paid full retail hunch at the time, which is 10% of what it's worth now. Yeah. So, but good for him. Yeah. He went with his gut. He's smart about that. Um, I've been lucky enough to have sold him, you know, a handful of cars, um, you know, including one last week. You know, which was a good good thing because well, he, he needs very little. You know, so, <laughs> but it was good. You know, back to your part about investing, right? It's you have to buy these things because you love them. You yeah. cannot be spending money you don't have. You know, and hoping that it's going to be worth more. Not today. I don't. No, think today. I think even just like in my personal experience, I've I've been pretty lucky because I've got I've I've ended up coming out all right because I think. My, the things that I like, I think other other people kind of also like, and I've I've bought some good stuff, and I've taken it to the right people, and I've presented it well when it's time to sell it. Yeah. But like, I even if the Countach market crashes, I fucking love looking at that thing in my garage. Right. I love driving it. Mm -hmm. It works great. Mm -hmm. It works as a car. Shockingly, mm -hmm. shockingly to everybody else, actually, no one else thinks it would work as a car. Okay. It absolutely does because you use it. That's yeah. why it works as a car. Don't let it sit. No, it's awesome. The air conditioning is cold, and I, and even if it, the investment goes down, the joy of driving it and taking it out to places and is totally worthwhile. And I feel the same way about my watches too. Yeah. I'm comfortable with a. No, I wouldn't put all my money in watches, but right. I'm comfortable if this watch is worth a little less tomorrow than it is today, I still because like wearing it. Because you used it. Yeah, yeah. And it gave you, when you went like this and you looked at yeah. it, it gave you some joy, right? I mean, exactly. you look at it, it, it's all about how you feel. It's not about you telling your, I got this watch. Yeah. You want to see my watch, you know. It's, no, it's about you putting it on in the morning going, oh, great, I'm going to wear this. Yeah. So, Do your clients all come find you at this point? Do you have to seek new clients oh, out yeah. still? Yeah. No, I am I had that conversation uh, with a very good, uh, one of the guys I've been working with very closely uh, has been Cam Ingram from Road Scholars in the last oh, yeah. year. And uh, I was down there. I visited their shop. They built a 4.2 liter Cayman that oh, yeah. I drove. Yeah, the, the, red, the red one. Yeah, with the gold that wheels. That thing was bananas. Yeah. And it was a real good time. I had a yeah. great afternoon driving that thing with those guys. Well, Very cool people. Yeah, they are. They're great people. And uh, without getting down a, a, another sidebar about um, guys aging out and how to stay alive in this business and how to be germane and how to provide a service for your clients, Cam's at a point, along with another friend of mine by the name of Chuck Ray, who does Italian cars. Um, and I think 
those guys working together more closely can, because the biggest problem now is you hear about guys retiring, guys not wanting to work on cars anymore, one man shops yeah. going out of business, yeah. and and all of a sudden it's like there's very there's fewer and fewer old Italian guys left. Oh my God! And then when they go, it's like your grandmother taking all the recipes in her in her brain with her. They're yeah. gone. So we're trying to build a little bit of a consortium of you can do the Italian stuff, you can do uh-huh. the German stuff, I can go find cars for you, your clients, and we have to find a couple of new guys starting out that want big collections because we know where the cars are. And in the last five months in the Porsche world, a couple of 906s, mm-hmm. a 910, uh, a couple of 904. We could sell five 904s if we could find more of them today. Really? Uh, yeah, and it's about going after those guys, the 550A. Let me ask we, you something. Is it, is it the same, like, couple hundred guys globally that are gobbling all this shit up or is it new people coming into these high do- high value collective items yeah they're new people they are new people yeah. so yeah. the market is growing it's not just bigger fish hoovering up more cars no because that's sort of been my impression but I'm, I'm happy to be wrong no the bigger fish bought all their cars at a fraction of what everybody is now buying them oh for. and they're now doling them out trickling them into auctions and getting super rich going back to the gto yes there are very few guys that will give you that much money for a gto because most of the guys that have the gtos paid <laughs> nothing for them yeah you know they're they're whether they paid six thousand dollars for one or ten thousand or a hundred grand or two million or three million they ain't selling them yeah you know and when they and there are those same people would not spend the money today on those cars and they have the money um so those guys like ralph Mm. who's had cars uh uh, the lauman collection miles collier pick the biggest collections in the world um the thing david gooding is selling that whole collection fabry's collection that he's selling april 1st those guys are not buying from these auctions they're only putting cars into the auctions right Interesting. So you, so you have to find a new group of guys and you have to sell them what is age appropriate for them mm. that they want. The guys that are now, the weird thing is there's so much concentrated wealth with some younger guys who have sold businesses for billions of dollars. Right, right, right. And they, you know, when they come up with their, Dude, I want my list. <laughs> I know, I had a guy and I'm not going to say his name and I'm not going to say his job, but it's, it's a tech guy. Yeah. There's a few of those by, guys. And I've been giving tours at, at my place, West Side Collector Car Stories. We're going to be open very soon. And so I'm giving tours to the respective clients Yeah, and they're telling me what kind of cars they have. And it's been an incredibly eclectic variety of stuff. And certainly most of the people who want to store cars with me, there is no financial basis for them to do so. It's just because they want the car. It's not because the the car is going to appreciate beyond the cost. Right. But one guy came in <laughs> and I said, okay, he goes, I got six cars. And I go, wow, okay, six cars. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you got? And the lineup he gave me was six different 2019 model year supercars. And I go, are, are you hosting a magazine test? <laughs> what right. what, what right. are you doing? Right. Exactly. And it was literally... The, the the motor trend car of the year like lineup you know what i mean it's yeah. like oh boy man how long is that gonna last oh i i i can't get specific because the guy will know i'm calling him out on this but there is uh, i i heard a very funny story about a similar guy ordering you know the the valkyrie the Koenigsegg, the pagani yeah. the whole and he went and there are they're all going to be painted in themes uh, <laughs> that are only going to mean something to him that uh-huh. will be sale proof for the for the rest of his life and it's like <laughs> it's like you know he's he's doing a, a rodeo clown in one and he's doing you know the it's just uh, like another, dead mouse it's got to be dead yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a dead mouse but, yeah, yeah it was like a, it was like a dead mouse version yeah, yeah but yeah. you have guys like that that have so much money yeah and they go well. I, I want you know. I want the yellow leather with the white pearl paint with the flag of this country painted on it. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. And and, and they all, they all make those Sultan of Brunei mistakes, right? You know. And then they kind of, they 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 get more sophisticated and go. You know what? I should be buying. Maybe I should have a McLaren F1. Maybe I should have a two fifty. Should get rid of like, all of car. this right. and buy one awesome thing. Right. I just consolidated yeah. upward my watches. I went from yeah. like fifteen watches to like eight. And right. I feel way better about my decision. Well, do I, people who do that, who clear out and consolidate upward, do they usually feel better after? Oh, absolutely. They do, right? A, a very, very, very good client in Boston. Um, sort of. 40 Porsches mm-hmm. and just woke up and went, 
you know what? I don't want the common stuff anymore. And the common stuff for his him GT threes. Yeah, yeah, but more. I don't need um, a GT three RS. I don't need uh, the lowest mileage uh, sixty seven car. I don't need the lowest mileage sixty nine car. Yeah. Let's get rid of those things and let's buy the five fifty A. Yeah. Let's yeah. buy a nine oh six and let's so and then all of a sudden they go from forty to twenty mm-hmm. and the twenty cars are all remarkable. Yeah. You know, yes. how nice does a car have to be for the miles to not matter anymore? Uh, is it is a car ever so nice? Is a car ever oh, so oh, important oh. that the mileage just doesn't even matter? Oh yeah, sure. Except for the geeks that want the new things, is another buddy calls them the footballers' wives' cars. Right. You know, I got to have my two eighty eight, the F forty, the F fifty, the Aperta, the the La Ferrari, mm-hmm. the Enzo, and all of those guys. Are, Oh, you know, mine's got 100 miles on it. Mine's got 200 miles on it. Well, that's a whole fetish that I think is getting played out. Because a lot of those, I, I've seen it now three times where those guys have gone, I want to get these cars that I can't drive because they're so mileage dependent. Their value is so mileage dependent. I want to get into things that are different. I yeah. want to get into fill in the blank. Um, well, so because I, you, gotta have, I don't you think need to have money and space yeah. because you've got this thing's going to sit. Right, if yeah. low mileage is a virtue, you can only drive it so much, mm-hmm. and 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 you've got to maintain it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really expensive thing to have the low mileage, the super low mileage right. car. I'd rather have a, a car that's so cool that the mileage doesn't even matter anymore. If you had a yeah. a Porsche that raced at like that five fifty yeah. you're talking about, a Porsche with a race history, mileage does is anybody not. give a shit about the miles? No, absolutely not. So a two seventy five GTB short nose, you could sell a handful of them today to guys looking because they're they're dried up in the market. Mm-hmm. Is the mileage uh, 10,000, 40,000, 100,000 going to matter? No, it's all going to be about the car. Does it so, come in um, in like blocks? I rec- I know with like, uh, like 04 to 06 Ford GTs, yeah. there's like specific tranches of value. There's like plastic still on the seats, right. and then there's like 500 to 1,000 miles, and then you've got about 1,000 to five or 6,000 miles, right. and then you've got you know over 10 yeah. is your sort of driver quality, and there's just real blocks of value there. Do yep. you see that with other cars as well? I don't see it as much in the stuff I deal in, because the older stuff, nobody cares. Right. It, does, it doesn't boil down. It, it boils down to what's original on the car, what can you prove, what's the provenance, mm-hmm. what has the car been abused? I mean, and, and is it real? That's another thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I mean, I, again. Talk to me about fakes. Yeah, I talked to me about all the people going to jail in Germany for building a couple hundred million dollars worth of fake race cars. Were they oh, were oh, they yeah. faking vintage Porsche? Or were they, what were they built? I don't, yeah. I don't know the story. Yeah, yeah. Tell me the story. They, they, it's, you, can, you can Google it and find it. Let's find yeah, it. It's, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the, do you plug in German, uh, I don't know, let's find out. Let's see. For, forfeited, seized, um, and there's there are guys there are guys for years that have been making fake cars in northern Italy. You know there 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 have been cottage industries of fake pre-war cars. The last thing you want to hear is well the car has been missing for forty years and we just pulled it out of Argentina. Don't even bother. <laughs> they're, 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 Argentina is Argentina the key word there. Argentina South America. I mean fake five hundred seven BMWs. Yeah. I mean those exist. Well, because I so, I know the guys uh, at Persang. Do you know Do you oh, know sure. them at all? Yeah, do you know yeah. John Bothwell? Oh sure. Yeah, He's like yeah. one of my favorite people yeah. in the world. And, and, like, and, but that's, that's a legitimate business. Totally. But and, something about pre-war cars in Argentina yeah. always seemed to me a little... Well, and I think that has hurt th- those companies making those wonderful replicas and all of those parts, especially on the Type 35 Bugatti. I drove uh, that thing. Oh, oh, my God. It's so good. <laughs> but why are the prices of the real ones down? Because they might have a lot of replica parts in them, and mm-hmm. you can't really tell. I mean, it, it becomes... It, it becomes a metallurgy question. <laughs> it does. I mean, when, you, when you're up around those numbers, you scrape a little bit of metal to find out, I want to make sure this frame was made in the 30s and the 20s, not in Argentina two years ago. His cars are phenomenal. They're yeah. great things. Oh, yeah. To drive. Yeah. To drive. Yeah, I drove his Alpha, the, the 8C. It was, yeah. it was the coolest. I it, mean, if you want that type of experience. Yeah, and you don't want to spend the $20 million on an 8C. Correct. You know, so... But that that has watered down some Bugatti values. Um, so, but but that's a legitimate continuation replica business. Mm-hmm. Um, I just sold a, a, a Tempero D Type Jag. Um, that's is that that uh, that uh, bring a trailer the, last yeah, week. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that that was mine, 
and I've had two of those, and they're you know it was one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. It's like built on an E type, right? No, it's built it, the, the running gear is E type, but it's built as a monocoque as a on a wooden buck. That's it. Oh, um, well, that's terrible I, looking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what an awful car. <laughs> so yeah, that's built like they built hand built over a wooden buck, like an original D type. They'll do XKSSs. Wow. They'll do, and it's it's. If e- you wanted to have this company do one for you, what would, what would a quote new one be out about the door? Two seventy five and oh. a couple year wait. Well, someone got a value. Somebody I got think. a value. Yeah, because an XKSS sold about a month ago for two twenty five, and the XKSS was left hand drive, two seats. This is right hand drive. It does have a second seat in it, but uh, you can't really fit anything other than a ten-year-old in there. If you have, so, you have you driven this? I was mine. Oh, I didn't know if it was like a broker car oh, or if no, it was that actually was, I, yours. I've had two of them. Oh, is it so, awesome? It's a blast. It's like owning a very fast motorcycle. Oh, it's got to be great. It looks fantastic. But you know how you just said you whittled down your watches? Yeah. Okay, so I had too many cars. Yeah. I had a Shelby 66 GT350, didn't use it. I had a Fuley Corvette, didn't use it. Had uh, an Alpina uh, 73 BMW 2002. Those are kind of cool. Yeah, yeah didn't use cool. it. Had the oldest uh, 1600 BMW from 1966 in the country, didn't didn't use it. I can see that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you looking at that 1600 and then looking at this Jag and going, you know, I think I know which one I'll drive. To. Well, I got rid of that too because yeah. it was like, I just have too much stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got... You don't have enough... You, you don't have enough occasions you don't have a time in the day and each one of these is your sunday drive but you only got so many fucking sundays right and that's why the speed one of the speeches i've had i have has done seven thousand mile rallies and i'm going to do two more this year oh, is that the one on your instagram of you sitting on the hood of yes yeah, yeah there's that, some uh, there's some folks that were that really took issue with that i'm like yeah i'm pretty sure that's his car oh yeah <laughs> pretty sure he can fucking do whatever he wants in his own car yeah and the paint is he pe- sitting on the hood yeah, i uh, think he's got yeah, it's okay yeah, he's pepper he, he's the front of that car is all peppered, and when it when it gets all completely schmucked up again, I'll I'll repaint. Is it. this the Colorado Grand? Yeah, is that that event? Yeah, I'm so tempted to do it in the Lambo. Uh, Will they a, have me, three, or is it too new? Fifty seven. Fuck. Oh well. So that's oh, well. yeah. That's, I couldn't just I couldn't like be like cool. <laughs> period. What year is the Lambo? It's eighty eight. So you, no. can't, you can't use no. it for anything. I guess. And that's why I'm <laughs> selling. The, I, that's why I'm using. That's why I'm selling the eighty five. Is this your vantage? Yes. Oh my. So that God is that sexy. That's going because I can't. Can't use it for anything. Well, that has event. all the right things on it. It's got the big air dam uh, and the fucking well, that's fog a, lights that's and the, the meaty proper, wires. Proper oh, German that's the, best. that's the fourth one of those I owned. I own thirteen. Do they two, drive good? Oh, it's a blast. What, it's could, a blast. what could I? What could you compare it to in terms of a driving experience? Is there is there something comparable? That's, yeah, yeah. Take a GT three fifty, uh huh, and put a much better interior, better brakes, better suspension, oh. and more grunt and less less sporty, more of grand touring and that's it neat so it's it's you're in two armchairs you just, the whole thing is leather wonderful smelling uh, wool carpet yeah leather headliner and it's a gentleman's express but um was these it, things are i used this was on my list i kept trying to get my pops to get one of these they were like 20 grand they were nothing right. nobody wanted them and that's 395 now oh so you call I mean, you have your dad call me Put it in your name in the will. He won't. You and know what? He's so, smart. I'm looking at Steve uh, at uh, Sirio's Instagram right now. It's the Real Bond Group. That's it on Instagram. You should follow him. He's got all kind of cool cars in here. But I, I think my dad is one of those folks that you were talking about, where he won't pay today's prices for right. that kind of thing. He just it's not his deal. Well, nobody will pay today's prices for those <laughs> kinds of things. Can we talk so, about the most recent round of auctions? Where I was of the opinion uh, that that prices were a little flat but i talked to spike and he he was of the opinion that prices were up um prices aren't up um unless you've got something so unique and wonderful that you can't comp it Mm. that it's one of those things if you have to buy it at auction and there isn't there aren't five on the market you're paying up for something right um the the good news about the auctions especially in arizona and now if the coronavirus thing doesn't ruin amelia island um sale through rates the percentage of sales in scottsdale and in at retromobile in paris were really great so the bottom is that a better indicator you think yeah uh, what it is is uh, sellers are being realistic about the value of their cars they've okay. come off if you bought something between Oh, 12 and 15, you're sort of fucked if you don't, if you recalibrate it, unless you bought one of those things that is still moving up. Uh-huh. But that's 
small 15 percent of the market uh-huh. maybe everything else is corrected down um production cars whether they're e-types 330 gtc's daytona's certain 911s 911 turbos all that stuff went zoop and then came right back down. right so i always say to people it's like enron stock did you sell it when it was still worth something yeah. i don't want to know what you bought it for right, right what's right. it worth today yeah. so uh, yeah, to st- Spike's point, I think maybe what he was trying to say was the market's in a healthier place than okay. it was. And I think there are too many auctions. Uh, the auction companies are only as successful as their inventory, and they don't get the best stuff. You get, they're just the best stuff trades quietly Pri- yeah, sometimes. Yeah, 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 privately. Uh, there are great cards that they get. I mean, uh, David Gooding's a good... A, a, Dear friend, Gord Duffett Arms, a dear friend. The guys at Bonham's are dear friends. Uh, I've had interactions with Dana Meekham, who's the Walmart of this business. He's mm-hmm. the most successful one. Um, and you look at Bring a Trailer, it's the same thing. They're going to do more cars than Meekham this year, but not all of the cars are special cars anymore. Right. So as long as the sale through rates are healthy, we're good. You know, and, and people, I, I say to a lot of folks, your car is worth what it was worth in 2009, 10, 11 now. It's not worthless, but maybe if you bought it in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you, you missed, still could. You missed your peak, but you're still okay. I looked at a 356 SC Cabriolet in Sherman Oaks Saturday. It has been with one guy since 1977. At best now, it's kind of a thing. It's been repainted three times, um, but er- he had every bit of documentation from 77 to when he took it off the road a few years ago. He's older. He's got to sell it. It's dust covered. It's been retrimmed. It's just a thing. The fact of the matter is he paid 8500 bucks for it in a, a, a $148 a month payments in a <laughs> yeah. lease in 1977. Yeah. And that car is still worth 75, 85, 90, uh-huh. whatever the number is, it's still worth. It's not 150, but, no. it's, but it's still a bunch more than he paid for yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, 10X yeah, what yeah. he paid for it. Yeah, but if you bought a car 09 to 14, you may be sweating a little right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's, it, it really, I mean, the muscle car market, I don't even oh, try God. to keep track of. It's not no, no, my no. purview. I don't need to know about those things. I, I don't understand it, honestly. There's certain stuff that's still just, and I just, I just, I don't know who's buying that shit. Well, a lot of it might be fake. It might be hype. I mean, <laughs> well, it might maybe. be just stories, dude. I mean, I, well, here's, here's one for you. Can you believe that not everything you read that gets, you know, sold across the block happens, yeah. you know? I, yeah. I'm so, Matt, I don't want to be the cynical, caustic, critical bastard all the time, but I've been around it so much, I can't get into the stories of things I know about on air. I can tell you off air, and you go, really, that happened? It's like, yeah, yeah really, that happened. That's it's car all business. underhanded shit. It's the car business. Yeah. So let's it's tough. go back real quick because you said uh two words you said earlier really kind of stuck with me age appropriate yeah you talked about cars that were age appropriate and the the cycles of the market that are age appropriate yep i went and i participate in the same thing mm-hmm. guy i'm 38 guys my age are starting to get into the market now even a little younger than me yep um 80s, which is good 80s stuff yeah 90s stuff yeah what's happening to the older stuff do are, is the older stuff gonna where are we gonna see Cause like already like stuff from the forties, if it's not super, super, super special, nobody gives a shit. Right. Brass era. If it's not super, super special, if you're not nobody doing the lungs of bright and run, no one gives a shit. So well, what they don't give gonna, a shit in this country. Um, but, okay. Fair. Um, England, the most, it's the fabric of society. The, the cars to them are like our baseball. Mm, so it's like top gear is such a big fucking oh, deal over it, there. Every single kid is around cars. Um, Germany, it's kind of getting a little green. There's a little backlash in Germany to old cars right now. It's the first time I've heard it. Um, the Italians, uh, uh, the French. The Italians don't mm, have any money. I mean, it's, it's, and the French don't either. The people with the money from France left. But uh, <laughs> They're t- all in Tahiti. I was just there. <laughs> 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 the fucking but, baguette uh, scene in Tahiti right now. <laughs> Right now, you wouldn't even believe it. I swear to God, gain a little, gain a little weight on Bro, vacation. Baguettes <laughs> yeah. everywhere, yeah. every dashboard. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, to answer the question, iconic cars pre-war are always going to be valuable, right? If you look at the stuff Gooding's going to sell April first, that's the top of the food chain. That stuff is going to sell for crazy money. Um, what I want to stock 
and use my own money to buy cars from the 50s and 60s right now? Absolutely not. And that's what I used to do. So I be, I was becoming a bit of a dinosaur, and to, a dinosaur until I shifted. Because unless they're very special things, you can sell a 410 Super America Ferrari. You can sell a 500 Super Fast. Um, can you sell a 330 GTC right now? I wouldn't put my money in stock one. I wouldn't stock. I mean, Dinos are weird because Dinos, and I've had a couple of them. I love them. They bounce down, and now they're bouncing back up. Daytonas aren't bouncing back up. 330 GTCs aren't bouncing back up. You, Do you, you think, know, you think uh, with the younger generation, it's all it's about cool the mid-engine car. cars and the front-engine cars are just not that cool anymore? Uh, I think it's a, a perceived maintenance, what it's going to cost oh. to run this thing. Yeah. And, and not all. I mean, 328s are down. 348s, who gives a I shit? I love Three, a 328. A I, 328 could, I could daily are, a 328. It's the best one Is of it? all of those. 86 to 89, especially the 89s. They are bulletproof You know what cars. they tell me, DL? They tell me the Mondial is actually the best one for daily driving. I have to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me. I'm I'm, up. I'm, I'm, I, if I'm, you're going to insult me right to no, my no, face I'm, like that. I'm, I'm oh, thinking 328s. 328s are great. nice. Mondials? No. You can't. And you can't. The electrics. I, I'll rephrase that. When one comes in for service and it's been sitting a while, all I can just. I'm like Scrooge McDuck. Oh, the no. dollar signs are going off going, do you know what this is going to cost to get this right? You know, this well, is a, any if you buy any Italian car that's fucked, yeah, it's but, what it's. I mean, I'm very lucky because I got reached an agreement with my, the seller of my car mm-hmm. where I I bought it while it had the engine out of it at GTO Engineering, and the agreement was when I'm handed the car, everything will work perfectly. Okay, and from there, it you know, that's what a I mean? good way to do but it. But I will be handed a freshly serviced, perfectly yeah. functioning vehicle that was done, you know, at GTO, which is yeah. which is good. Yeah, good um, guys. And, and Eric um, Stander has been um, uh, looking after that car for like 15 years. Did he give you the 100-mile shakedown? Because what happens is we have the 110 and 100 I test. Know, I, yeah. I did you it know, myself, so but it, it did apply. You, you, you know, take it for a mile, bring it back. Take it for 10, bring it back. Take it for 100, and if everything's still working after 100, that's that's as good yeah. as they could possibly so in, do. So after one mile, I got some steam, and I was worried, and he just had to tighten a hose clamp, and yep. we were good. Yep. Mile 100, a saw came off the fuel sending board and it, it was the one and only time the car conked out on me <laughs> sent it back it took him like 20 hours to find the problem and 20 minutes to fix it yeah but i never had the 1000 mm-hmm. knock wood never had the 1000 6, kilometers later we're still good that's excellent so uh, so we're ahead of the game well i mean you are if you can beat uh the unreliability problems from when it was new and against its contemporaries. Yeah. Um, Road and Track did a great thing in, I think, 63, where the guy was tired, the, the writer was tired of buying used Ferraris because they were always breaking down. There were always, you know, stuff from the 50s wasn't right. He bought a new Lusso. Guess what? The broke. Lusso <laughs> broke down is <laughs> worse than the used cars he was driving. And I used to print that out and hand it to people saying, do not expect your old car to work every day. They didn't work every day <laughs> then. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. There's stuff that you just, you know. Yeah. Mine works. It yeah. works. Um, but back to the period of the oh, age yeah, appropriate yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. What so what is what is really on the what's on the ramp right now? I think there's a paradigm shift going on. I think there's a lot of things from the seventies. I mean, the Radwood thing makes me giggle to no end because you know how happy uh, it makes me uh, to see uh, the word uh, Radwood <laughs> in a Gooding catalog. <laughs> I mean, dude, when I opened that Gooding catalog yeah, and it said yeah. Radwood ready, I went, Oh, oh. my <laughs> god, the boys are fucking here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'd focus on that stuff. Yeah. I mean having, that uh that young timer collection yeah that was the shit yeah having an r5 evo uh turbo f- for sale recently i'd put money in those again yeah you know i homologation I'd buy, rally cars yeah all that stuff is of the moment and whether it's launcher weirdness that's catching on whether it's the japanese stuff that's mm-hmm. catching on it's it is shifting towards newer things and there is a 20 year shift it happened overnight um it I, went from 60s to 80s overnight oh, 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 Absolutely. And it kind of skipped the 70s. There's kind of a bunch of shitbox cars. There's not a lot lot of good 70s cars. No. I mean, I have one of the early Gen 500Es, and I love it. And that's my Radwood car. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that thing is built like an armored truck. That's it's what like you a- want a Mercedes. Def- I had an R129 SL500, and that's what you want a Mercedes, you know, of that period yep. to feel like. Yep. Floaty and solid. 
Yep. <laughs> it, it, it feels like it's going to go for 200,000 miles yeah. that way, but it'll start every yeah. time you get in it. Yeah, and then something and then, pla- plastic breaks. It's yeah. $5,000. We're just doing the wiring harness in my garage. Oh, uh, no. Today. Is it biodegradable ha- wiring? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, I, have to, I have to talk to my dear tech, that, that Justin, who didn't listen to me and said, you might want to, that skip, I think, is coming from the wiring harness, and the skip ain't getting any better. Biodegradable So wiring. I got the pictures this morning. It's just all gone. It's the stuff all, was missing. Yeah, that'll so. happen. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's that shift going on and i think um going back to you know the, the earlier question of what about the older cars yeah brass era stuff is, if it's special will still sell would you want a garage full of model a's and model t's no i don't think so I don't, no. uh, would you want a, gar- a garage full of real proper hot rods not not unless they're the real the, the, the iconic ones are on the cover of all the magazines um yeah i i would put money in a 904 Porsche. I'd put money in a 550. Mm. I'd put money in 275s. I'd still put them in Lusos. I'd put them in certain cars that transcend generations and transcend sexes. Right. 911s transcend sexes. It's like the only car, not the only car, because that's foolish, 356s and 911s, women like. Yeah. Well, they're, they're easy. They're friendly. They're easy to deal with. They're, yeah. yeah. Friendly is a good word. Approachable. Yeah. Yeah. My friend, you know, uh, do you know Jen Nicole? Uh, she runs the Porsche Experience Center. No, she ru- she she almost daily drives a three fifty six. Yeah, why um, not out here? It's fantastic. Yeah, air cooled cars are good for California. They just kind of work. They don't have, you don't have a lot of problems. Are do you think with um do you see uh well the Porsche prices of the air cooled stuff like you said the less the more everyday Porsches have settled. Yeah, and you can buy you can buy them again. Thank oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you can buy nine nine three RSs again, nine sixty four RSs, and all that stuff has come down. Oh, has the oh, has yeah. the nine sixty four RSs come down? Oh is sure. It, is it back in regular Earthland? It's Earthland because once they became twenty five years old, guess what you could go get in yeah, in, in Japan Europe and, in Europe and, and, and didn't have to worry about converting them anymore. And yeah. having done three nine nine three RSs, those prices will come down further when those cars are all twenty five years old. Mm-hmm. You know, and and they're wait, they're getting there. They're they're just about there. They're about there now. Yeah, yeah ninety four. So, we're almost there. Yeah. We're within months if yeah. we're not there yet. So it, it's all that stuff. But try to find a GT one, right? And, and that's a car you could sell for big money for you know, sure. You know, that's that's where those like the CLK GTR, the GT one, McLaren F one. That yeah. era of Le Mans race cars, I think, is and they're going to be enormous dollars. And and the guys chasing them. Are you don't want to get in wallet fights with those guys? <laughs> I mean, I've got a guy he looking just for. Don't an, give a fuck. No, he's got. He wants an MC12. So I put an MC12 on his lap, and he really runs. Well, I really want one of the competition cars. Well, they made ten of them. And by the way, I don't want any competition car. I want one of the top three best ones. So you get a guy like that, yeah, because he's had the Harrods F1 car, right? That you can't say, okay, would wouldn't you rather have this? No, I know what I want, and I want the one that won that race. And when that one becomes available, I don't need a placeholder. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. there are guys out there chasing that stuff, and it's it's mega. I mean, it's crazy, man. It's I mean, it's a, it's a whole other world. I don't really know what it's like to to have to 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 say to use the words. I don't care what it costs. Right. It's well, just that's not a it's not something I understand. I said to Magnus yesterday, it's easier to sell a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar car than it is a two hundred thousand dollar car if it's the right car. That's probably true. And then you have the knock on effect of the billionaires' kids. Yeah, that's a whole thing that's <laughs> making me like these kids. Have new- you seen Tax the Rich on YouTube? No. You haven't seen it? Uh-uh. Tax the Rich on YouTube is the guy, he's the son of some some big shot in the UK, and they've got a big farm, and they've got some cool cars that you'll probably recognize if you see them, F40s and F50s. And they drive and them through everything. They like they basically make rally stages out of their farm and beat the shit out of the cars. Oh, I, now I I know who the... I, I, it's I, the I, son I, of some heavy I, hitter. I know exactly who it is because yeah, yeah. he was just mentioned the video <laughs> just mentioned fucking awesome oh yeah. yeah i didn't know they had something called tax the rich but that's that's yeah it. i think yeah. the <laughs> tax the rich 100 i think i think tax the rich 100 is the name of the channel oh that's funny yeah this is it tax oh, uh, the rich I, 100 I, he hasn't made a video in a while but that's uh but that's it if you see they got what, some cool shit they're fucking this f40 gt just mobbing lighting jaguar wheels on fire um i think the jaguar 
I just sold that Jag and <laughs> took it in trade against a limited edition, one of the fiberglass Jags. Uh, nice. that, that car. So, yes, I know who you... Oh, yeah, I know who this is. 4.4 yeah, 4 million <laughs> yeah, views. Yeah, yeah, this is... 220s came up out of nowhere, huh? Didn't they? All of a sudden, people gave a shit about 220s. Well, they're easy to maintain again. As long as you've done the fuel tanks and everything else in them, they'll send you to you know make you sell your house if you have to service the car. Why yeah. did this stop? Well, because all that shit deteriorated in the back that you can't get anymore. Now you have, might have to fabricate. Is oh, there anything great. on the market that seems like unobtainium but secretly, there's a whole bunch of them that people are always looking to sell. No. Not really? Not really. So I life is so. what it seems in that case. Yeah. Yeah, rare I, really means rare. Rare means rare. I don't, I don't think there are hoarders out there with five or six or things. I mean... Um, that used to happen years ago. A friend of mine used to make markets, and he did it with Moretti's, AC Bristol's, Fiat 8Vs. He did them with Seattle 208s. Mm. And he'd buy four or five or six of those things over a course of two years or so. Yeah. He'd bring one out, promote the hell out of it, would do really well with it, and say, I might know where there's another one. Right. <laughs> so My friend uh, yeah. Tony Shoshani, the oh, chairs she- and flares <laughs> Dinos, <laughs> he cornered the Dino market and got fucking <laughs> rich as can be doing that shit. He held on to a few things a little too long, though. I yeah. maybe. Maybe, yeah, but maybe. he did well. Tony did well. He's he's, already, he's doing okay, <laughs> he's Tony. Fine. He's a good guy. I spent New Year's yeah, with Tony. Yeah. He's a character, man. I love that guy. But he, he had uh, that great alpha. He had the uh, alpha he showed at Pebble. That he, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to forget. This. It's not the Sportiva, but it's something it's like funny. that. The yellow car that he restored um, and had, I think, Tillak do it or one of those guys out here the, do it. Where's this alpha? Hang on. It's fucking this thing, right? This yellow thing? That's it. Yeah. That's it. It's like almost like one of the bat cars. Yeah. Is it one? It's not It's, no, it's not, not one of the bat cars, it's but not. it's the same as a Gia or something body or Vignali or it's one of those. It's a Vignali bodied car. Yeah. Real cool looking spacey shit. Love it. That's um, that's great. But wait, wait, where are we just going for that? Oh, the, 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 the things that are actually rare. What about the modern hypercar flip game that's going on right now? You've got Ford who sues people to trying to flip their GTs, right. but then you've got a lot of these McLaren P1s and Senna's and stuff. Like, I pick up a DuPont registry. It's full of these fucking things. Right. What's going on in the flip game right now? Well, I think that's... You have to be really careful with that because those are like 90, 120 day, 150 day markets. And stuff becomes you know, super, super, super desirable until the next thing mm. comes out. And you don't want to get caught playing, you know, musical chairs when, hey, guess what? Um, Gordon Murray's car just came out and everybody wants one of those. So we're going to sell the P1s. We're going to sell the uh, Senna's. We're going to sell all of the Apertas. And then yeah, it, it doesn't take very many of these things to come onto the market to tank the market. Yeah. You know, we're not talking about, you know, uh, millions of shares or something you're talking about if 10 of them come on the market where are they going how are they going to get absorbed and that goes back to the billionaire boys club thing it's the the kids who are i think there's a lot of younger guys that groove on buying those cars always the newest always the newest gotta have the latest and greatest thing Mm. and i think that's uh you know the name winston goodfellow uh sounds vaguely familiar yeah ferrari historian italian car guy He's got a great observational piece. He's written about it online in his blog where when the McLaren F1 came out, it was a million dollar car. It was the first million dollar car. Right. And it failed to sell. Yeah. So, and you're talking about- Leno got one for like 800. You're talking about 100 cars. Yeah. How many million dollar cars are out there right now? And there's got to be at least a dozen, right? At least 12. There's like (laughs) 3,000 examples in units of multi-million dollar cars. Oh yeah, in individual units, of course, yeah. Who's buying them? I don't Fucking, that's why I asked. Uh, that's why them? I asked you if so, it's the same couple of hundred guys buying everything. Oh, well, that's yeah. I thought you meant the old cars, the new car I meant thing. It both, but yeah. yeah, I think I think you hit a market um, that is really dart specific there. And if your local dealer who's going to get three of something and his three best customers get them, they're the same three guys that over get and fill over in the and blank. Over, yeah, yeah, yeah. But after a while. How many times can you get punched in the nuts losing a couple hundred <laughs> thousand know. dollars on a car you don't drive? Yeah, true. How, so here's here's the, uh, my best example of that is a bridge too far with the Porsche Speedster that just came out. I think Porsche screwed the pooch in a big way making all those limited edition cars. And I have an R that I've lost a hundred thousand dollars on owning it. And I had a GT3 RS when they came out because a friend of mine who got a 918 sold it to me. Mm-hmm. I used it for six months, sold it, broke even. But then they came out with every single limited edition thing right. and they all went 
and they kept getting more expensive and more expensive. Yeah, Speedsters and, like three hundred grand, right? Yeah, and they made almost two thousand of them. It's well, GT two RSs they're they're all over the place. Right. I mean, all for a limited edition car. I probably see a GT two RS every single day in LA. And if you were <laughs> the luckiest guy to have made fifty grand on yours because you took early delivery of it, yeah, and flipped it first, yeah, yeah, great. But you do you want to be having a garage full of GT two RSs? I completely agree. What's and, the worst evil to you? A dealer that charges. More. cash on the hood or a dealer that makes you do the buy a used one until and then we'll take it oh. back in so you know where it's some of the dealers go well, we're not allowed to charge over sticker so we're going to screw you in this other way to get you on the hook right well that was more the that was the ferrari game you got to buy these maseratis right. to get in line so you know <laughs> right. and, and, and now look at you know how many for how many ferraris contemporary Ferraris do you want to buy? Yeah. So that goes in cycles to answer the question. I think it's the guy that charges you more. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I never had anything. We probably could have done it with your generation Vanquish. We could have charged 10, 20 over uh -huh. because people didn't want to wait. But uh, no, I think that's a short-sighted thing. And again, car dealers, shocking that they would have done something in poor taste. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think the bigger fool is the successful guy that runs he's the he's the titan and the 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 just king of his industry that gets pushed around by a guy who says if you want that car you got to buy these six of the things <laughs> why would somebody fall for that yeah i, why, I mean can you imagine that conversation your dad's successful right can you imagine because we because th we think with our dicks because well, we're men and we yeah. think with our dick i mean honestly that's because some people have self-control and other people don't I think that's probably why. Well, Rolex does it with stainless watches. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, and people play the game. Yeah, people so, play the game. I mean, you could buy the Here's gold or platinum one. I know. Or you, no, I gotta have the stainless one because I, I can't, I can't get it. I went to a Rolex store where the salesman was a little too honest to me once about that. I, I you know, I just asked him. I said, "What would it, you know, what would it take to make a Pepsi GMT appear yeah. right now?" And he yeah. goes, "Well, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to buy some other inventory." And I go, "Like, like two ugly date justs or something?" And he goes, "Date dates." with diamonds <laughs> and i go oh jesus <laughs> but then you know what i gotta be honest my father found and got me a pepsi gmt for my as a wedding gift it's an amazingly generous gift yeah. by any stretch like of any more measure. now my dad rules. 30 seconds ago no, my dad's a gangster yeah <laughs> and, and and you know what have having it and being in the club and the story's all where'd you get it i kind of like it i kind of like that yeah, and I'm. And well, I'm ashamed that my no, ego I, likes it that much, but I do. No, I. I have a huge ego, and <laughs> why do I drive a sport classic? Well, a, it dropped me dead in my tracks the first time I saw one on the street in London. Yeah, but then it was like, what do you mean they didn't bring them to the United States? What do you mean there are only seven or eight of them here? Well, I love the car. I love it even more now because yeah. they're not on every corner. Yeah, it's the same thing. Same thing with the shooting brake. I had to love it, and I had to love the. It's it's so viscerally and orally exciting but then you kind of go yeah there aren't any you're not going to see another one and you go oh all right that, yeah that makes it even that makes i it love even having tastier. the only is something it's the yeah. fucking coolest it feels really nice so, i had a so people pay for that first you know for that couple of months of being the only guy yeah. and for somebody that's worth a lot of money i had a mongrel uh daytona it was a 6240 dial with a 6263 uh bezel and it had later pushers because they'd have been replaced. I had more Rolex guys look at that watch and they their heads used to spin and go, where, yeah. where did you get that? And yeah. I never said, it's a hot rod. It's It was made up. Just let it's them just, think. It's just, just, so they're yeah, like, let them think whatever. that's the most beautiful thing I've never seen one. It's like, you could make one if you try yeah. hard enough. You get the spare parts, dude. That's funny. So no, I buy that. I mean, I, yeah, you'd think what you dick. I mean, it. sure. And you, you, you enjoy, I, I don't need to be the center of attention because I don't go to car shows. I don't like cleaning my cars and winning <laughs> prizes. I don't need validation from strangers to tell me they like my car. Uh -huh. Do I like going down the street and somebody gives me a thumbs up and something? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you feel good about that. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have that happen than somebody give me the finger. I've always wanted a <laughs> phantom two-door coupe. Uh -huh. A, my wife would divorce me. My kids wouldn't get in it. And driving around in it, everybody would go, you pompous asshole. You fucking dickhead in the Rolls Royce. I love I Phantom so much. I would love one of those cars, <laughs> no, I love Matt. Phantom so much. Dark green with a with a saddle interior. Yeah. And a lot of value in one oh of those right now. Oh, my God. They're like 150 grand. They were four and a quarter when yeah. they were new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love one. My wife was like, D for a split second. I got one of my kids to say, Dad, if you come home with a new Bentley GT, that's okay. 
because I think those are good cars. I think I they're think beautiful the cars. The Phantom driving experience is so unique that yeah. even if it looked like a Camry, it would be fucking amazing. <laughs> it's not it's showing off in a Rolls. Like I totally get yeah. that. I yeah. like being a boss, but you've driven one, right? Yeah. You've driven a modern Phantom. Well, why do you think I think there's there was, there's nothing like that? I got that's a, sailing. You're yachting now. I got a buddy who <laughs> is a Rolls Bentley guy, and he's had all of them. And I and maybe that's why I keep looking at him going. Is something to this? The I mean, Phantom is really the shit. something to this. When you've got, when you've but, got, a, it's got those knobs, so you drive it underhand. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> You're not even supposed to use the top half of the steering wheel, Steve. You use the bottom half. Well, you don't want to be gauche and have that's people see your hands shit. and speed yeah, yeah. diamond watch through the windshield. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but in this day and age, especially today, with the backlash against everything with the backlash against success and we're not yeah. going to get into a political discussion unless you yeah. want to not but really. it, it's, 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 yeah, <laughs> it's looked down upon to be successful i mean right. well i think if you have if you have older cars you can take a sidestep from that it's like the great fucking line in gone in 60 seconds nicholas cage you know i saw three of these at the local starbucks but right. if i had a 275 gtb4 <laughs> cam i would be a connoisseur it's yeah. the same thing yeah this my thing. Countach was a shitbags car until four <laughs> fucking years ago. Coke dealer. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm a connoisseur. Are, yeah, 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 I was. A, I was. This was a shitbags car for yeah. the entire time. Yeah. Well, then a generation of you guys who had them as poster cars yeah. grew up, and there's what's happening in the shift. Yeah. You buy. You know, Farrah Fawcett is not desirable to your generation guy. My generation guy. No. Every 13 year old kid had that poster from Charlie's Angels. No, but my was, ca- my car did a shoot with Cindy. That's like having a Porsche that raced at Le Mans. That was the car? Yeah, buddy. I got photos. Oh. I got the plates to match. That's dream girl. That's Top like having a girl. Porsche that raced at Le Mans. That's yeah. as close as you can get to that <laughs> with a Countach. Actually, no. Uh, my homie Doug bought the Monaco Grand Prix pace, pace car. Okay. You know, well, that's Doug, pretty you know cool. Doug Cohen? He's a, he's a pimp. Yeah, I do know Doug Newport Cohen. Hotels, yeah, yeah. Doug Cohen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a pimp. So that's, Love the guy. But you can, and you can also drive that car down there. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you, you can. You can drive it around and nobody's going to give you the stink eye. That's for, the only uh, better Countach than the, than the Cindy Crawford one is the Monaco the, I, Grand Prix. You might as well get, can you get like the Pepsi commercial on a loop in Bro, the car somewhere dun, as well? Dun, dun. <laughs> I get the soundtrack going. I have a bag phone. I fuck, I don't fuck she around. She lives up in Malibu. Why don't you go visit her and get her to pose I, with the car? I tried to get my agent to get her to sign and it didn't work. Oh, it come on. It didn't work at all. She seems cooler than that. And she does, yeah. but it did, did, did yeah, you know. I'm no, not, you gotta pull in a favor. I know, that it's guy. a whole thing. It's, Al Pacino was having dinner at Dantana's last night. I wanted nothing more than to go up to him and go, because she's got a great ass. More importantly, me. respect you know, to you for having dinner at Dantana's <laughs> last night. I'm far by myself. I'm I a, love I'm, that I, am, I am a sad dude. I had to no, sit there by that's myself. That's a classic. Yeah. Folks who are not in LA, Dantana's is a yeah. steakhouse from yeah. like the 50s. Yeah. Old school. Old school. One of the fucking guys from Sopranos were in there. Yeah. The, the actors that played the mobsters yeah. whose name I don't even know. The, oh, the, literally? Yeah, 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 yeah. Last night. Oh, really? And Pacino's holding Which court character in the corner. Do you know? I tried to to Google the cast from like season six and seven, but they were like the big coppos that get killed in season seven. Oh, okay. And they were having their their quiet dinner, That's and I'm like, great. this you can't script this. No. And the guy next to me gives me the elbow, and I have a cousin who looks like Pacino, uh-huh. so I'm like, oh my god, he does look like him. He looks like my cousin Lenny. It's like no shit. My and favorite thing about L. A. is just that though that yes, that really is that person. Yeah, yeah you're here. Like, yeah, That's he like, lives here too. And you don't want to go up and do that you know thing because everybody needs their. You don't yeah. want to be that guy. Still, it's surreal shit, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. cool. It's we fun. got uh, we got two questions from the audience before we get out of here. Boy, and we, I'm really, take you a, we, we really pulled a shitty audience. Dude, Monday, Just two t- <laughs> Monday at 10 a.m. I typically do shows in the evenings, so we got you in for your flight, but live wasn't going to be a big one on this one. But that's okay, because you're more... You're, you're, Is it my staff that are we didn't need the, the questions? We didn't need the filler. You're interesting, so we didn't have to go to the audience. Uh, Rocco wants to know, he's selling his PDK. Maybe Is Rocco, Rocco. Magni? Is that your client? No, Rocco's my son, oh. so that's my... Man, but not Rocco Magni. Different, different but, Rocco. That, that could be Magni. Magni. Italian. Magni. Sorry. Rocco Magni. He's selling his PDK equipped 9972 Career S because his manual track car made him realize he wants a manual daily driver. Should he buy a manual version of the car he's got now, the 9972S, or an air cooled uh, late Carrera? It's a daily driver in Texas. Oh, dude, why are you selling the PDK? I mean, I get it. I drive a PDK GTS every day. Um, 
go with this earlier than a car as your weather will allow you to have. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'd go for the earlier, more analog experience. That's what I would do. I would too. I my air conditioner in my '87 works properly. It's not a, a hamster blown over a no, ice cube it with it a straw. No, it does work, but yeah. it it sucks at a minimum 25 horsepower out of the engine. So oh, I only right. really use it when I'm like on the highway. Yeah. So Texas is hot as balls. Yeah. And be advised that your throttle response, your engine response, will kind of suck with air conditioning. My on. best advice, Rocco. Please, I hope you're listening. Before you get rid of the, the PDK car, drive one of the older cars for an hour. When you go test drive one, go out with the guy, convince him that you're the right guy to buy his car, respectfully drive a car on a test drive, and drive it before you make the commitment. Because what you might have might be the thing you go back to. Yeah. So there you go. Do that. Grass is not always greener. Uh, and Carl Sanders wants to know, Steve, what cars, and we can we can limit this to two or three, have aged the best and aged the worst in the last 20 years? Anything any, anything come to mind that sticks out? What's aged the, the best in the last 20 years? I mean, I really think that... You give me your answer. Give me a little lead into this, because I... I, I think I'll the Ferrari brain. 360 Challenge Stradale... And is my, the best, the best. Yeah, I think my Aston Martin Vanquish looks just as good. Yeah, I think it looks even better now compared to the current crop of Astons than it did in in period. It's unique, and it was unique at that time to what they were making. Mm-hmm. So we agree on that. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I disagree. And I think the R thirty four Skyline GTR has aged incredibly well and will be huge money when they are importable here. I was going to say because you don't see them. They're well, they're so, tw- not twenty five yet. Yeah, no. Well, see, I think I'm going to go back to the rolls i'm going to go back to the two-door phantom because that's going to be the last of the hand-built you know yeah bmw was involved um so this is i mean it sounds like a couple of rich dicks talking about very expensive cars right now but i would go with that's okay i'd go with the the vanquish and the phantom because because of how much a fan what's look at the phantom uh, and drop uh, it's so great so it's just such a in your face F you to the yeah. world. Have a cigar. Go go out and have a steak. Have some laughs. I mean, the personal luxury oh. coupe doesn't really exist anymore. Where it's not yeah. that fast, or it's not a super sports car. Yeah. It's just for you and taking up space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all switch. They all oh. drive X sixes now. Oh, they all drive right. the coupe versions of SUVs. Well, they're going to buy the Lamb, the Urus, the 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 Bentega, yeah. the the Cullinan, which is looks like a big Lego to me. The new Land Rover looks the like Cullinan a big Lego to me. The Cullinan is the best. So, I think of them. I, I really think, well. I well, like DBX is pretty damn nice. I haven't driven it yet. I'm driving yeah. it in Palm Springs in I think a month. I was. Did I, you drive it? I didn't because I had one for the Boston Auto Show, but it was a pre-production car that we were asked not to drive. A couple of my staff have gone over and taken the training, and and they come back like this is the coolest thing since sliced bread. Yeah. And and I think Aston has nailed not because of my relationship with Aston. I think the Cullinan looks like a Lego. I think the new Land Rover looks like a Lego. I think the Bentega, it's the good. The Bentega looks it, like a Q7. Yeah, because it's built on that chassis. Yeah, so They're stuck with that we front axle to base of windshield yeah. proportion that Rolls-Royce is not stuck and with, and that's why I like the Cullinan, because at least it has that raked back yeah. luxury thing I want. Yeah, and it, it's like driving a Phantom. It is like a get out of my way. I, I get the, the Lambo one I was the most skeptical about, and that's the one I think that serves the best purpose. I think that really is a, if you want to drive a Lambo and have quote unquote sensible car yeah that's it's such a i see them everywhere when i travel whether they're selling it's, a ton of them oh my god it's i love how company. it drives i hate how it looks i don't think that that pointy bird beak thing works when you stretch it vertically color wise makes a big difference black it that's needs to be only black one. it needs that's to be gray only one yeah the shooting brake only works in black to me yeah it doesn't work in the two-tone you seen red the pink one it. No, there's a pink one running around L.A. Is it a Jenner? Is it a Kardashian? Is it something? I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. It's matte pink and it's fucking paint. It's not a wrap. I saw it at the dealer. It's paint. So that's aging the worst. (laughs) Go back back to the question. Answering the question. What's the worst? The worst things. If you go back, the further you go back, uh, I think there was some real miscues with some what was supposed to be great cars. I mean, I I hate that whole who was the designer the flame BMW designer Bengal. 
I mean, uh, I hate everything from that period that BMW made because uh-huh. they were on such a high for such a long time, and then they just went right off the cliff. I so, actually, I kind of agree with you. I think the the Bangle era BMWs have not aged well yeah. and will continue to not age well. Yeah. Although the V10 sounds good. That V10 M5 was the first car I ever did 200 miles an hour in, and that's a real 200 mile an hour car. And that's a real collectible thing. I mean, I th- right? I just to drove right an E8. I just drove Zuckerman's. Yeah. E39, fuck me. That's a car. Well, I had I had the 1988 version new when they couldn't Those give the cars away. Those are spectacular, too. $51,000 at the time, everybody bought them for 34 or 35 because they used to give them to the zone managers to put miles on them because nobody was buying them. And now... Oh, tr- 65, 70? Yeah, for a tr- good but one? try to find a good one. Yeah. They've all got 100,000 miles on them, and they're maintenance whores. They are, the M5s always, are bad. Yeah, yeah, they're bad maintenance. The, you might as well the, have an M1. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a simpler version of that same engine. It's actually, the, I, I got, I'm so lucky and I'm so spoiled. I got to go to Spartanburg, uh, where BMW's got their little track, and they've got their collection, and they pulled that red M1 they've got out of the collection. Uh, they let me run 50 laps. Did they really? 50. And the car was great. They're very it special worked. things. It, yeah. it had nice steering. It had nice brakes. It was very comfortable. Shockingly good. Don't look at how it's put together <laughs> because the Etel design Lambo marriage there with BMW was a real disaster. And you go, I didn't know this was fiberglass under here. I didn't know this was all unplated material. And I didn't think fiberglass could rust. You know? No, it's but just, it was good. It was nice. Yeah. And I they're gorgeous. It. Yes, they are. Zwart drove one for years before he started driving a 906 as a regular car. So <laughs> I want to. I, see, I, I, I'm going to have you, Zwart, and Bruce Meyer in here just oh, to tell one-up stories on each Please. other. Please. I'm going to see Bruce tomorrow down in North Carolina. We're Are doing you? a ride and drive with Jack Eeks. So we're going <laughs> to- Shitty my gig life. that is. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I signed up for it. Again, it's my marriage with Oh, Cam. is this for his special edition 911 he's doing? No, no. This is a, this is a complete, um, without plugging something, because I'm not really- I'm not here to plug anything, but you can plug things. I don't give a shit. Plug whatever you want. Road Scholars is uh, why I love their uh, business model at the moment. It's all about lifestyle, and this is a lifestyle event. This is a complete private lifestyle event, much like the Four Cam Jam was in October when we, when Cam and his family and his crew. Uh, got all these guys together to run at VIR, and you had to bring a four cam, uh, you know, three hundred and fifty six and or race that, car. That and looks or. like this photograph here. That's it. Yeah, it's a bunch of cool cars at VR. I have a I, the Ingrams have always been very nice to me. Every time I've had interactions with anyone in their family, they've been yeah. super nice. They just opened that uh, museum, pretty much, right? Isn't that them? Is that Brumos? No, it's Brumos. Because the Ingram suffered from that explosion last year. Oh, oh right. So that but, was. But Lee Keen was doing something with them this year. Oh, it could have been. Maybe I'm fucking it up. But Brumos they got has got shit. their thing going on. Follow Road Road Scholars One on Instagram. There's yeah. your plug. Yeah, there's uh, those guys. So it's. I think the future for success in this business is lifestyle, and that sounds like a real. I want to use the word synergy, and you can mm. throw up. You know. Um, it's, it's one of those things where if you're getting involved in this and you have the luxury of time and you have access, what's the hardest thing about this business is access. You can have all the money in the world. If you don't have access to the events, if you don't have access to buy the right cars, you've got nothing. And plenty of captains of industry have made the wrong steps. And then, you know, I always say, why are you making your problem my problem? You bought this. I didn't suggest you buy it. Now you want me to get rid of it for you let's just take this a step at a time and get you into better cars. Uh-huh. And what's the purpose of them? Road rallies, shows, you want to win Pebble Beach? Fine, I don't, you do, I'll help you with that. You want to show some of the quail? That's great. You want to go do the Mila Amelia? I'll help you with that. But it's all about lifestyle. So if, if you have the luxury of time and you do the Goodwood Revival, you go to the Mila Amelia, you go to Villa Deste, Good God, you're having the time of your life. Yeah. And you're hanging around with it's like-minded. costing you a lot of money. Well, yeah, this isn't a cheap hobby, dude. No, I mean, no, but no. hunting is more money. Having a boat's more money. Yeah, Having true. a horse is more money. You're having f- a horse is more money, yeah. probably. Horse eats when it's parked. <laughs> <laughs> Flying private is, yeah, that's yeah, more yeah. money. That's true. So you can do it, but you don't have to spend, I mean, buy an MGA twin cam, buy a 356 C Cabriolet. Do whatever it is that gets your rocks off when you're driving. Go do that, but if you... Uh, Lufticult this year in North Carolina. I've got friends coming out of the woodwork going, are we driving down? 
These are guys I used to drive across the country with for fun to Pebble Beach. We would do a, a, a trip from Boston to Pebble. In, in the old cars? The old cars. Yeah. So you do 600 miles a day in a speedster. That's yeah. a proper road <laughs> yeah, rally. Zwart is yeah, Zwart yeah, with yeah. his canoe and shit. <laughs> yeah. so, you know who I respect is the Shines. They drive to Pebble Beach yeah. in their McLaren F1 and their F40 and the F50. And then yeah. they drive around Monterey with bugs all over them and shit. That's gangster. That's I love perfect. it. I saw a GT1 in Monaco once for the historics. The guy had driven it from Ireland. That's awesome. The car was all covered in dirt and filth yeah. and it was like well I'll never see that again yeah you know so I think it's about lifestyle I think it's about you just making sure that you get into this to the right reason mm -hmm. um and having having memories what's better than memories I mean why why oh why, no why, why do nothing. I have, why do I have an old Land Rover because when my kids get in it and go to the beach in it they're all smiling yeah you know you don't need an expensive car to have fun I but agree. it's access to the beach. It does help. <laughs> it doesn't suck. Um, check out this piece in Bloomberg by our friend Hannah Elliott, which is on, on Steve. It's a great piece. It's what, uh, on top of Spike not shutting up about him, it's what inspired me <laughs> Spike's to, get him, to get him on the show. Uh, and of course, The Real Bond Group on yep. Instagram. If you want to find an amazing car or perhaps get rid of an amazing car not get rid of a car with sketchy ass provenance <laughs> give steve a, a a follow and a buzz over there of course we are the smoking tire on all the platforms you know the drill and uh it's kind of nice to be back in the studio after a very long vacation zach's gonna be back with us and we're gonna actually talk about tahiti on our next show but i'm glad i could get you in thank yeah, you for no. making the time steve uh, thanks for the invitation it's an honor to be here man a big uh, do the old big fan big fan uh, howard it's cool man uh, you know <laughs> Let's make but it a regular thing. You come to town often. I would love nothing more than that yeah. because we could gas on endlessly. I'm sure about this, this show could go on. You know what I'm yeah. about to do right now? The reason I have to end this show, I would go on for another hour. I'm going to, up to Bill's right now. Oh, you are. Where I'm meeting Bastard. Um, these guys from a company called Vonin. Have you heard of Vonin? No. What's that? Vonin makes an aftermarket hybrid system for the 911. So they literally have a electric motor oh, and a no. battery pack. Oh no. And they put this in an otherwise naturally aspirated 911 oh. and add 150 horsepower without touching the engine at all. Is it good? Is it shit? I don't know, but it's important to try it to find out. I'm such a fossil fuel guy. That's okay. Internal combustion dude. I don't I mean I, I, I can't wrap my head around anything else yet. I know. I but, understand yeah. this, but so, like, let's have a go. Let's, yeah, let's, let's see if it's good. Um, here's my prediction. It's I know it's really expensive. It's like, it's really expensive. And it's not really for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is my prediction. But I think this it is, was, I think it's cool. This think, was fun. I think it's yeah, cool. To do. And I think it's, you know, it'll be, it'll be a thing. It'll, I, we'll I, see. The I video just, will be interesting. One way the other. I just looked at a 2000 horsepower carbon fiber car being built in Torino. Uh, they're going to build 50 of them, and the whole purpose of the car is just to go faster than the Chiron. They want to go 320 miles. Is this miles. the uh, uh, is this an Apollo project or something like that? You know, it's funded out of uh, Japanese guys behind it, and it was the first iteration of it was called something Owl, Aspic Owl. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, did, All Spark thing. Owl. Uh, yeah, All Spark Owl. So I think it's along... It's the next gen. Oh, a a spark, of a spark, a spark owl. Yeah, and it's electric. It's electric with two thousand horsepower. Yeah. All right, that's we and, need that. You know, I mean, it's, it's not heinous. No, no, it's got a lot of GT one in it, doesn't it? It's a it's a nifty thing, but mm. again. Uh, you got to plug it in, man. I yep. mean, you, gotta <laughs> uh, you know what? I like an electric daily driver, especially in L.A. I mm -hmm. think an electric daily driver is great. And I've I had a lot of fun in the Taycan. I mean, that thing's a monster. If you haven't had a go in one I of those yet. yet, no. It's some pretty next level shit. Everybody, every, it's real crazy. There's no negative comment it's about real it. Real crazy. It's probably too fast to sell to people. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> um, you know. But I like I like my senses. I like my senses fizzy as well. And yeah. So to that end, I'm with you. Excellent, brother. Uh, thank you, Sirio. Now You're I welcome. know when they say fucking Sirio's gonna <laughs> deal with it. Now we know who the fuck Sirio <laughs> is. Thanks for coming in, man. That's it. The Small Entire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast. It's ShoutEngine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally, something to say. Have a good afternoon, everybody.